Hello and welcome to session number nine of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Woo! Let's go! Hello! Oh, yeah. Hello! Hello! What's, what's up? What's happening? <laughs> You're <laughs> giggling. Squishmallow things. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Sharing pictures of these giant pillow thingies that I want. Yeah. Send them to me. Yeah, you think and you want, but I once you get it. one, you get ten, and then and then you get the big ones, and then they just take up so much space, and you just kind of don't know what to do, <laughs> and then you lose the bed because they just fill up the whole thing, <laughs> and it's and one of us gets kicked out because they can't kick the squishmallows out, so... <laughs> hmm. It sounds just like my dice collection. <laughs> How many do you have now? Sleeping on the couch, my dice need to stay here. I have so many, they need to be comfortable. You need to get yourself like a dice bed. Scrooge it up. Uh, nothing makes me feel more comfortable than laying down on my own on a bed of dice. Uh, instead of a bed of nails, it's a bed of dice, which, I mean... Yeah. A Matrioska doll of squish mallows. <laughs> oh, that's idea. kind of a good idea now, because then you'd have to cut one open. No, yeah, it's not a great idea. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad idea. Oh, I like Bad idea, idea, Sid. <laughs> Thank How do you. you know, have you ever cut open a squish mallow? No. See? <laughs> Benji has. Oh. oh no no! Benji the bunny. <laughs> Benji the he's, serial murderer <laughs> punctured our squishmallow. Okay, all right, dandy time. Uh, the... Oh yeah! Oh, that's what we're doing. Oh, okay. yeah, that's what we're here for. Okay, we we could play card names if we'd rather. Just... Uh, no, we can we can D and D. You're probably prepared something, right? Uh, uh, uh I can put something together. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Let's just improv the whole game. <laughs> All right, well, that's um, what I did towards the end of my campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Matt is gonna be the first person to improv for us today because uh, it's uh, it's your yeah. time for for a summary. Uh, <laughs> you feel yeah, confident? Okay. Uh, sorta. Um, so I had kind of a I had a one big idea for a, a great recap. But mm. then I ended up just not being able to quite put it together the way that I wanted to. But it ended up, I, I ended up basically having a gift for everybody that, that came of it. So that will be, that will be later after the recap. So instead, um, I'm doing a more, um, I guess an interesting take on it. Um, to give some behind the scenes stuff of what Pontifex is kind of thinking of. Um, mm. and kind of doing off, off screen, uh, which will conveniently summarize most of the points that have happened, and then I will briefly run through the things that it did not cover. Um, mm. So I'm going to be sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. oh. Do I need to pause the music? Um, music is fine. Okay. Um, this is going to be um, the two letters that Pontifex wrote. Um, one of them has already been... Uh, written and sent, and the other one has recently been finished, uh, finished being written uh, after his jaunt in the tavern talking with Stars on Her Eyes before rejoining the group, um, and has not been sent yet because we're we're going to the Elian Arden colony before he sends it. So, but uh, there's some insight into some letters that no one else is supposed to read, but you, the players, get to know, mm -hmm. and you, the audience. So let me see if this works. I hope this works. Okay, here it is. I'll set it up so it's... Uh... It shows up on stream, which it should as soon as I click on this. Hey! 
stream, pause, swap to application to resume. Maybe that didn't work. I'll try a different way. It should work if you just tap back up. If, if you just tap back into whatever you're streaming. Okay, we might have to just do this where you can still see the URL bar. Whatever. Oh. <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah, looks good. Mm -hmm. All right. He has such good handwriting. And don't worry, I'll be narrating, so you don't have to read this uh, <laughs> this very difficult yet very pontifex like uh, text. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, wait, did it? Okay, okay. You can, you guys can still see it. Um, so this is um, Pontifex writing the the letter um, to his contact in Nazaradora that he sent with um, Talix to be delivered at some point, which I believe already happened. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and I think this was him writing this uh, kind of shortly after arriving in Cleon, I think after like our first day here um, before it was sent off. Oh, it doesn't scroll if I hold down my push to talk. Oh, well. Uh, my dearest Petra, it has been far too long since our last correspondence, and I apologize that my first letter to you in some time is one regarding your expertise. This is a bit of a delicate matter, so I will ask that you read the remaining contents in your private study. As per our last conversation, I have underwent my first expedition onto the continent across the Sea of Chaos, Ledaria. Fear not, for I am not on my own, but with a knowledgeable guide, the son of our very own Aaron Moore. We have recently come into some new friends, fellow explorers of the new world, and they have proven themselves most dependable. I feel more secure with them by my side, which has allowed my mind the respite of ponderment. Our mission of discovering the whereabouts of Jamiel Fleetfoot has already bore fruit, the taste of which is bittersweet. We have discovered his remains as well as a book. A journal, actually, and within its pages resides what we believe to be the lingering consciousness of Jemuel himself. The location of each discovery must remain a secret, as per another arrangement I have made, but to call it a magical place would be an understatement. This has led me to believe that the mind populating the pages of the journal is actually Jemuel himself, though I know not how it was done. On that front, I am currently heading towards Elian Arden settlement to send an inquiry to my arcane mentor as he would likely be the expert on this subject. As to why I am contacting you, I am theorizing that the perpetuation of Jamuel's spirit in this form of the journal may help in your thesis regarding the anatomies of the innately magical and the mundane races. Have you ever encountered something similar to this during your studies? The soul vacating the body is something I have read of in my studies of the higher magics, but never has the destruction of the body not directly led to the destruction of the consciousness. There is, of course, a lingering side effect, uh, likely related to the severance of the soul from the body, uh, amnesia. He has forgotten nearly everything that he knew and encountered, but has been slowly regaining his thoughts as we venture deeper into the mainland. I look forward to hearing your thoughts into the day that we might be uh, reunited in person. Uh, you should be able to reach me by sending this letter through whatever contact in the Jade Council has delivered it to you. It may be prudent to address the message to Talex Moir, uh, appending my name to the letter itself so that he may forward it unto me at his earliest convenience. Uh, with all of my fondest wishes, Pontifex Vastalus Alenach. And then the second, which is a little bit more, uh, we'll say important, I guess. I assume you guys can see this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to my astute mentor, uh, this shall be the first in my planned continued correspondence with you. I wish for us to have some manner of open channel, as this is a topic that shall require plentiful discussion in both directions. I will be stationed in the Alien Arden settlement for a number of days after sending this message, so please inform me if you have any ideas for how we may perpetuate this exchange of information without my departure from the continent, and with great subtlety. 
As per my mission of discovering the whereabouts of Jamie Fleetfoot, I have succeeded, but in a way I could not have predicted. I found the remains in a place of great magical significance, and have also come into the possession of a magical tome, a journal or notebook, to be more precise, that appears to contain his continued consciousness. He is currently suffering from a case of amnesia, likely due to the permanent separation of his mind from his physical form, but he seems to be recovering pieces as we explore further into the mainland. I have sent a medical inquiry to Dr. Petra Kreutz of Nazridora, the very same I've discussed with you previously. Given the circumstances, I believe you would be the authority on the perpetuation of one's spirit in the form of a magical tome after the body has been lost or discarded. This sounds vaguely similar to the awakened tomes you have theorized yourself, as well as possible relation to the arcane object I keep in my possession. Might you have any insight into this? If not, this could be the discovery of the century for the college, and I would very much seek to submit it as a collaborative work, including my companions and yourself, of course. I am currently in Cleon, the Nazaradoran colony, and have taken the public forums in hopes of finding other magically inclined scholars to possibly discuss this with, but I've had little luck other than a dwarf woman's concerns regarding the reproduction of a native water fern, and a tabaxi woman named Stars in Her Eyes who is in charge of some sort of augury-related astral observatory. I met with the latter, but had little luck in the way of ascertaining her magical knowledge or inclinations. She seeks an audience with Jemuel, but I'm unwilling to disclose the details as of yet. I would also like to note an interesting occurrence that I've been experiencing since the discovery of the journal and keeping it on my person. I fear my own mind is becoming interwoven with that of the journals. This has been a recent experience, as this has been the first time since acquiring the journal that I have been apart from it for any amount of time. I have been experiencing what can only be described as a fever dream. A waking dream of visions and utterances that are nothing short of gibberish to me. Uh, for disclosure's sake, I shall describe the ones in recent memory in hopes that you may glean something. The first experience was that of time dilation and short-term memory loss. I can recall the recent events of the day with some form of clarity, but their chronology evades me. It feels like I have been away for weeks, but I have proof of my physical self existing and having passed the time of a single day. <laughs> the second occurrence I will describe as involuntary scrying. I seem to clearly recall the actions, the words, and the events surrounding my traveling companions, who coincidentally have been in possession of the journal yet I was not among them. I have since made contact with them, and my visions were confirmed to have happened. It is as if I saw the events from an outside perspective, like that of a spectator during a dissertation. The third example is one akin to augury, not unlike that expected of the aforementioned observatory. I experience what I will describe as the witnessing of the possibilities of alternate timelines. A branch from our own, where events happen differently and alternate choices made that change the direction of history. I heard an alternate telling of events regarding my recent meeting with stars in her eyes, in which I perceived a quest of sorts sending me westward towards a colony of gnomes in order to help the Tabaxi woman. I'm admittedly ignorant concerning most settlements in the New World. Uh, yet, after asking my companions about certain areas of the map, my suspicions were confirmed. I have no way of knowing of a gnomish colony to the west, yet its existence was confirmed by my local guide. This is very concerning, as it shows a direct influence over my own mind. I am monitoring it accordingly and not publicly pressing the issue. The fourth and final instance is the one that most worries me concerning my own mental lucidity. I heard voices, yet not those of any I have met before. They spoke to me with such familiarity, yet addressed me by a name unknown to myself. They were speaking in unison, talking over one another, yet not arguing. It was as if there was a delay between one talking and the other's hearing, yet all in agreement of one another. Amidst those voices, addressing me directly as a member of an audience, Required that I remember a series of words and letters and numbers and symbols that seemingly held no significance other than to ensure my observation. A passphrase, it seemed. I can still vividly hear the words in my head. Donald Duck X one Z dot semicolon minus five frog XYZ dragon cannon. 
The mentioning of mathematical formulas and common numerical variables intrigues me, but the final phrase of Dragon Cannon led me to believe the nation of Campbell may have some involvement with Jamuel Fleetfoot's predicament and my afflictions. <laughs> This may, of course, all be fantastical imaginations of my own creation due to the magical forces experienced at the location of the journal's founding, but they seem to be the only one exhibiting these symptoms. I'm keeping it a secret between you and myself for the time being. I look forward to your hasty response, as I am only able to convince my traveling party to remain here for so long without raising suspicions. With great anticipation, journeyman Scrivener Vosil Pontifex Vastalus Alenak. Wow. <laughs> Pontifex is crazy. <laughs> well, oh, maybe, do you guys not remember that? <laughs> I remember the Donald Duck XYZ dragon cannon passphrase I was required to know. Imagine the poor NPC reading this. <laughs> <laughs> this is like an arcane mentor. So... <laughs> It's probably yeah. like, yes, yes, I have heard those voices too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I came to the same conclusions about the XYZ dragon cannon. <laughs> Damn Campbell. Okay, wait, can we just talk about how Pontifex is still a journeyman? <laughs> yeah. Oh. He's still a journeyman? My face how long hurts. has he been doing this? Uh, I think like round about 50 years. Oh. Oh no, buddy. If I, if I have my timeline in my head, I could give you the exact date, but, you know. <laughs> wow. Well and done. It's only part of his long life. Um, so then I just kind of threw together the, the rest of the summary that wasn't going to be included in a letter. Um, the party interacted with a bunch of residents in Cleon, especially focusing on Boovan, um, <laughs> the party favorite, clearly. Uh, and then met and traded items with Glimmer, and then departed to Vera, heading through the swamp. Sometime before, uh, Pontifex had a meeting with Stars Under Her Eyes, and there he learned about a previous relationship between Jamuel and her. And uh, he revealed that he has some form of direct communication with Jamuel to her, but the method uh, remains confidential. Um, after being roped into a theory about the Jade Council being the cause for the earthquakes of Ladaria, um, to further their agenda of spreading Vakanoth's necessity... Um, Pontifex was given a message for Jamuel, which was, have you found a solution? And should she be given an appropriate response, uh, Pontifex will have earned a guided tour of the Obsidian Eye, which seems to be a very clandestine, uh, then... Uh, after that, whenever the group had, had headed towards Vera or Vera, um, we were attacked at camp by a group of spawning sentient plant monsters that seemed to be coming from a source deeper underground, which subsequently fled after we, um, I think we kicked a few. I think we stabbed a few of them. I know one of them was melted by acid, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and then after some shenanigans involving flashing the elderly woman, um, the party continued towards Vera. All right. Thank and you. And I have one more. Oh? Um, as, uh, because I wasn't able to actually implement these uh, in my grand plan, I still ended up making them. Uh, so I want to kind of share them with everyone. I guess I can actually share this on screen. Oh. And then I will I will post them in our little thing so that everyone has these. What did you do? Oh, I, are you sharing your screen again? I am. Um. Okay, let me bring you back. Uh, 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 <gasps> oh, wow. So, <laughs> I'm not I'm seeing like it. A, I'm like a big fan of the Fire Emblem series, just like in general. <laughs> and I remember when I was a kid, um like probably circa like 2002 um and we had like you know the 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 family pc that you know couldn't do anything at the time but it had like the rudimentary microsoft paint and i remember making sprites <laughs> for fire emblem because i was such a fan of it um so i haven't done this in like basically 20 years um but i decided to make like a fire emblem inspired sprite for everyone's character 
That's so um, good. So this is Brooke, um, and I've tried to implement parts of everyone's character descriptions. So this is because uh, I actually didn't remember that Brooke's shield, that that he has a shield to begin with, but also that it's like a black outline shield that like fades from red to purple. Mm -hmm. All these cool little details that I just forgot about, but now we have them in sprite form. Uh -huh. um, oh, so this that looks so cool. And then this is oh, Pip and Squeak. And, uh, I seem to to forget the doll that he's always carrying around because I wasn't here for the session when he actually used the doll. Uh, but yeah, there's Pip and Squeak. And then so here's cute. Pontifex. <laughs> yeah. With his, his little stick and his little arm. orb and his his big boots, yeah, he very wide. And then here's Talix uh. <laughs> with his walking cane and his little bedroll and his little necklace. Uh, and then here's Tekka. Oh, yeah. Tekka. With his recorder staff and his antlers and his crazy hair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's so then, cute. I, I, oh, no, I, that's not what I want. Can I commission Buvan? I feel like Absolutely. the entire party would love that. Oh, that's amazing. That's so great. Oh, well oh, done, that. This makes me so happy. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and I can't go. I don't know why it's not letting me go back. Is there more? Um, yeah, there's one last one. <gasps> Man, come on. <gasps> it's our whole group in the in the Twitch overlay order that we've established as our canonical party order. <laughs> yeah. That's so great. Yeah. So I wanted to implement these into some kind of an animated recap, but I was unfortunately not able to do so across the week. So instead these are just gifts for everyone. Just gifts. <laughs> and uh, yeah. and Boobin will be Boobin will be next. I am filled with joy. <laughs> oh, so precious. Damn, good oh, job, thank man. Thank you. Thank you. I so know my last. Uh, of my lore did not work, huh? Oh, well, I know that my last recap was uh, less fantastical than the subsequent ones with involving <laughs> comics and paper puppet theater. <laughs> And such, whenever mine was just like, you know, uh, 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 what ended up being about 30 seconds due to the speed of speech, like 1920s radio announcer. Uh, so I wanted to do my my share of the arts and crafts. Wow. I have loved everything that you guys have done so far. I I really mean it. Um, thank you. Um, like, just the fact that you guys are putting any amount of time into like basically homework in between sessions is just it's so wonderful and i'm really blessed by players like you guys so uh please don't Aww. don't 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 like worry about comparing yourselves to uh to one another uh everything you've done so far it's all been really beautiful we're all uh, special in our own ways yeah <laughs> really thank you uh oh Here's your die. They have been resized because we, um, in order for the roll to count, they need to be tossed into the, ta the dice tower and they need to be tiny for that <laughs> to work. Um, yeah, here it is. It's your little, oh, let me rename it. Summary inspiration. If you recall, uh, the very, very, very last thing to happen last time uh, um, was a bit of um, uh, there was a bit of tension between the party members uh, uh, in the morning uh, uh, following uh, uh, the, the the final events from last time, uh, and Talix had momentarily just walked off, uh, uh, just in search of some food, but mainly um, bothered. Uh, and angered by certain accusations uh, from from Pontifex in regards to well, not accusations but like possible theories about uh, what the Jade Council or some uh, other people might have uh, been up to in Ladaria. Uh, but uh, if that, well, I wanted to uh, just ask uh, if there was anything else you guys wanted to talk about or do before setting off, just in case. Mm. 
I can't think of anything right now. Okay. You? Then the group uh, begins to, to pack up, and eventually Talix is going to just come back, and uh, um, he is going to be in, uh, in a bit of a foul mood for a while um, due to, to what has transpired, so he will be a little bit less talkative than usual. Uh, but you guys are ready to set off uh, um, on your journey once more. This is your third uh, day of travel since you have... Uh... Oh, there's a crystal. Uh, <laughs> someone's... <laughs> Still, someone's bedroll. <laughs> Alex's bedroll. <laughs> Yoink. How many? How many days do we expect it to be till we reach Campbell? Normally, the um, the the distance between Vera and Cleon uh, is about uh, nine days of travel by uh, by foot, um, nine or ten. But because you guys took a shortcut, it should probably be. Uh, you took a shortcut, but you also were kind of slow through that shortcut. Um, yeah. So you probably managed to shave off, assuming nothing goes horribly wrong, one or, one or two days from the normal uh, journey time. Uh, meaning that you should have about... Uh, uh, this is your third day. Yes, it is. Okay. So you should have five to six more days to go. Mm. Okay. So, um... Today, let me to bring uh, back. Uh, nope. <laughs> um. Oh God. Here we are. <laughs> I remember how this works. Um. Okay. Halfway through your third day of travel, you seem to have left behind the worst part of the swamp. You begin to notice a bit of a shift in the trees around you. Uh, the mosquitoes are still proliferating in this area, but at least the ground is a little easier to traverse, drier, and more compact overall. Also, music. There we go. Yes. Um, every once in a while, um, you hear shuffling above your heads, and you're, you always turn back and wait and stay quiet and look around um, just in case anything is sneaking up on you and something does seem to be following you uh, although from from quite a distance and um, you know in a very sort of like very cautious way um, whenever you you catch this this shuffling over your heads uh, um, you catch glimpses of uh, a handful of creatures moving from tree to tree that either seem to be tracking you or to be heading roughly in the same direction you currently are. Um, these seem to be lemur-like animals uh, um, that follow you for a little bit. Uh, um, curious yet shy without ever bothering you. Is there anything you'd like to do about this? Should I say something? Oh yeah, you can do that. You should probably ask them if they want something. Ah, uh, okay. Oh! Hey! 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 What does the fox say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Where are you guys headed? <clears throat> uh, let's begin with an animal handling check and go from there. Oh. oh. Okay. Here it goes. Get me ready. Get me Here it comes. Here. Okay. Uh, the group of animals is initially uh, spooked by the sounds coming out of the mouth of the the child in the group, um, but not not in a way that like uh, the words scared them. It was more like just a very instinctive uh, um, reaction to the fact that they've been like addressed and they scatter. But then over the course of the next minute, they do begin to uh, climb back to towards the trees that are closest to you. Uh, you can see that they have. Uh, uh, their 
They have like this very fuzzy gray fur and their bellies are pale blue. They have these long barbed tails and uh, uh, two sets of arms that they use to climb from tree to tree with ease. Uh, one of them clings from one of the branches of the trees uh, upside down from its tail, uh, getting like as close as they've gotten so far to any of you, but they're still like a good 15 feet away. And uh, um, as the, this monkey-like animal makes uh, uh, noises similar to what Pip just said, uh, Pip, you hear it say, Um, y y you have food? Maybe? Oh, oh, they're hungry. Um, yeah, we have food. We Wait, are... how many of you are there? Uh, many. Oh. We we hmm, we go to to where food is. Oh, do what you do you need eat? food? What do you eat? Um um mm, sweet from tree round. Oh. Um, yeah, I mean, we could use some. Is there enough for everyone? We could come with you. Um, always plenty. That way? Yeah, we'll keep each other safe and we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we all get enough food to eat. Okay, we stay up, up here. Okay, we stay down. Good plan. <laughs> um, and then the uh, the animal climbs back onto the branch, uh, and the entire group resumes moving again, somewhat in the same direction you guys are going. They're gonna take us to get food, guys. You know, Pip. Uh, maybe it is escaping my memory, but. Uh... Did you ever explain how you are able to do this? It is miraculous. I've seen a lot of things in my life, but nothing quite like that. What? Talk to... talk to... lemurs? I, I mean, not lemurs in specific, but uh, yes, uh, how you know their language. Mm, uh, the languages with, of all of the animals. It started with squirrels, and then it just... I just started learning more from there. But squirrels were first. They're very easy to understand. I see. There are some there are some harder animal languages. The ones you know. for reptiles is really tricky. Because they mostly <laughs> just sit there. It's a lot of body language. <laughs> <laughs> they speak with their eyes mostly. Yeah. You know, you could uh, amass quite a following in academia back in Ezradora. There are very many who would love to sit a course such as that. I don't know if I'm much for lecturing. When they happen in the future, I will be a student of yours. Well, you still... I'm still a student of yours. You need to teach me, remember? It's perhaps an exchange in the future. Okay, I'll teach you how to talk to animals if you teach me how to speak in people's brains. That is a deal. <laughs> we'll see what progress we make on that. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, by the time night comes and you guys need to um, set up your camp, uh, um, the, these animals that have been following you around, uh, um, sort of disappear into the trees and you can see a couple of them sleeping, um, most of them, however, being too well hidden, uh, for you guys to, to be able to tell where they are. Uh, so it seems like you haven't quite arrived at the location they're heading for yet. Um, are you guys foraging for food? Yeah, we should be. Okay. I'll take uh, uh, a survival roll from whoever would like. 
Uh, sure. I will. Uh, I have not contributed to this in a while. I feel like it is only fair. All right, Ella. <clears throat> now that I know that Pontifex might be the best at this in the whole group. <laughs> now that I come into this knowledge. <clears throat> uh, so I'll take a roll. Yep, yeah, from each of you. Oh. <clears throat> I didn't oh, roll. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Does he anger the monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a He's like, oh look, there's food right there. And he's like trying to take it from one of the lemurs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, poor, uh, yeah, poor Brooke has uh, a bit of a, a bit of a, um, uh, there's an argument between him and the uh, and his animals, uh, uh, and ultimately they win, uh, and Brooke uh, uh, leaves uh, empty-handed. Um, Pontifex is a bit more luck uh, in that regard. <laughs> what is it? 19? Um, okay, that means that today, in your party of five, you only need to consume two rations, and the rest is provided by the uh, plentiful forest. Sweet. Nice. Uh, Pontifex, you mainly found this food by glancing around at what the, uh, not just what the, what these animals are doing, but most of uh, the creatures of this forest, and kind of figure out where they're where they're tending uh, to, uh, to gather. So for you, it was less about like tracking things down, but more about just observing what's around you and uh, drawing some conclusions from that, uh, and uh, sure. ultimately that uh, that paid off pretty well. This process of elimination. <laughs> More things in life are multiple choice than people believe. <laughs> the answer is usually right in front of you. Does some people look too hard? I get so. They don't look too hard. They called you some really terrible things, Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Sometimes you don't have to translate everything those animals say. Poopy head. <laughs> That's what that, that, that's what they called you, not me. <laughs> Most of them were names involving poop. I don't know. It seems to be a theme. <laughs> if I were to make a guess, Monkey Alex things. is definitely sketching these animals out. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> From uh, a distance. From a distance. Do From we know what they're called? Uh, I'll let uh, um, hmm, this will be Pip and Brooke who can do a nature check. Oh, and sorry, uh, Pekka. A nature. I don't know if, like, I don't know if. Like, has Pip ever encountered them before? I guess that's what part of the check is for. Oh, yeah, well... Let's see. Based on the rule. Pip has, Tekka has not. One second. I'm not sure if my nature checks from my class are with advantage or not. I can't find it right now. Which ones I have advantage for. Because some of them are only for tracking faith. I don't know which one says uh, it The was. advantage would not apply in this case. Is it also for nature checks? No. It also applies to nature checks, I believe, yeah, but it, not in this case. <clears throat> what the? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! That's that impressive. Makes well, sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's a. Uh, it's typical, you don't really know anything about their their culture, and you have managed to somehow really offend them today. <laughs> uh, but yeah, oh, to... Oh, they poopy hats. <laughs> they did. Uh, yeah, to Brook and Tekka, these are both just brand new animals, so... Um, and it makes sense for Pip, who is from... Uh, uh, no, the kind of uh, <clears throat> close by. Um, your colony, Pip, is not... Uh, um, in or close to a swamp, but there's still like this very large forested area directly west of it. Uh, and some of these animals do linger <clears throat> in that forest. Uh, so you know that they're called Ugrin. Ugrin. <clears throat> and you know he that speaks their language fluently, so. Yeah. You know that their uh, barbed tails uh, um, are actually poisonous. Uh, 
um, and <clears throat> they, they use them as like their, their main weapon of uh, uh, self-defense. Uh, uh, but they're otherwise kind of pretty docile and will not attack unless they're like in danger. Mm. Um, they're shy, they don't really like people much. <clears throat> uh, but the fact that there's so many of them around here is uh, uh, really neat to you. You've never seen so many at once. Uh, so you figure that uh, their uh, their claims that there's plenty of food in the air are uh, likely uh, very true. Uh, if Talix is permitting, I think Pip would like uh, tell Talix about some of these things if if he sees Talix sketching them and point out like the tail and and the name and and help Talix if he wants. Yeah, that sounds like something that he would uh, he would uh, definitely enjoy hearing about. Um, so, for the next day, um, do you decide to, to follow these creatures? They will deviate a little bit from the direction you're, you're mean to go, but it's like just slightly more to the, to the, uh, to the west uh, than you mean to. It shouldn't send you too far, of course, but um, I mean, it's up to you. Uh, I have no objections. To follow along. Follow along the Lemurus, Lemurus ride. Mm -hmm. The Ugrin, yeah. And it's not in the wrong direction, it's just not like straight where we're yeah. going. Like you, it, it, it might add like a couple of hours to your journey today. Yeah, I, 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 that sounds fine. We sort of have like a, a protective <laughs> bond. <laughs> Brooke isn't too happy, but if the rest of the <laughs> wants to do it, go ahead. Let's go. Okay, in that case, I will not need a survival rule for today either. Uh, as you're mostly going with them wherever they take you. Uh, so in your fourth day of travel, well, uh, nothing of note will happen today. Uh, you do find that the Ugrin were absolutely right uh, in that this particular area of the swamp is especially full of fruits and other just very easily attainable foods. Uh, so for tonight, uh, um, I do not... Uh, you automatically succeed on your check to collect enough food uh, uh, to feed you. So no rations will have to be, to be spent. Um, Can we store some more for the next day? Yes, yes, you can bring extras for um, for the full day for tomorrow. Oh, nice. And then uh, we move on to tomorrow, where you say you say goodbye to the Ugrin, uh, who are then going to go their separate ways from you as you um, uh, resume your journey in the direction you mean to go towards. Uh, Brooke, I'll take your survival check. Can't get worse than the one before. <laughs> Here we go, break the curse. You got this. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> nearly oh. broke my okay. game. <laughs> Alright! <laughs> there we go. Uh, okay. Uh, oh god, where are we? Hold on, I'm lost. Uh, <laughs> oh, fully close to Vera. <laughs> I, I accidentally closed my map. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Apologies, I the DM got lost. Um, there we go. So, on your fifth day of travel, uh, you emerge from the forest, uh, and you find uh, the road again. Uh, based uh, on uh, where you think you are, Brooke, there should only be about three days of travel away from where you are now. Um, hmm. Your group is in nice spirits. Uh, after making it past the roughest part of the journey and having uh, plenty of food for the rest of the day. Roughly an hour before sunset, uh, as uh, uh, tiredness is beginning to set in, you all notice something to the east of you, high up in the clear sky. A white, shining dot moving roughly in your direction. 
as it gets closer, you quickly realize that we are looking at a massive dragon flying two or ah! three hundred feet above the ground. <laughs> its scales shine like marble, dotted here and there by glimmering blue spots. It's um, for now unclear whether it has seen you, but at least it seems to be uh, moving from east to west um, without really adjusting its direction to come specifically towards your group. Does it appear to have a cannon on it? Would one describe this as a dragon cannon? Uh, roll a perception <laughs> check. Okay. I'm sorry okay. For, for screaming and interrupting. <laughs> it was just so excited. That's the right reaction, to be fair. <laughs> See if this might be the XYZ dragon cannon that he's been hearing in whispers. Pontifex just stopped to take a good look at this dragon who seems to be missing any semblance of a cannon on it. Ah, it's perhaps hidden on the opposite side. <laughs> uh, what would you like to do? Uh, well, Tekka don't... will like crouch down to Pip and like put a, <laughs> put a hand in front of his mouth. Quiet! There it is! Te Tekka, that's the dragon! Alright, now you've seen it. Everyone should probably hide. We don't know. What, uh, what is the significance of this dragon of yours? It's just really cool. Oh, and perhaps I... you have more of a future in uh, Plurna than you think. Oh. You should visit Campbell sometime. Oh, but, uh, uh, ah. <laughs> All right, you know, no, there I... are some people that are part dragon, you know. It's so big. What? Yes, uh, we call them uh, Dragonborn. Uh, one is a very close friend of mine. They're born from dragons? Uh, sort of. Oh. <laughs> Pontifex is like, you know, kneeling or sitting down wherever we're <laughs> hiding. But uh, he's just talking. Yeah, I was about to say I start dragging balls. Like, <laughs> um, I've Not never seen a dragon before. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> you pull the two of them to the east, towards uh, the, the shade of the trees, uh, where, they, where they're getting a little bit thicker again from the forest you just came out of. Uh, all of you roll a stealth roll. Oh, can I, can I choose to fail? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I have a minus three at disadvantage, so... <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Double nat 20? Uh, you can choose to oh, fail, well. yes. Pip, that is your choice to make. If if everyone else is like <laughs> I'm also making it right? very clear that we should hide, then Pip yeah, will hide. But... I mean, I just said shh and pulled All right. <laughs> Brooke seems scared. Oh, so I rolled one, a two, and a three. <laughs> that is. <Ooh! laughs> Damn it. <laughs> People oh, either chooses to fail or rolls in that twenties. <laughs> no, these are very uh these are very disparate rolls. Um Pip is convinced. Oh okay, maybe I guess I should hide according to Brooke. And then he just disappears entirely <laughs> and is like eclipsed by monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh plus four. What? Over here. I like the idea of Brooke trying so hard to like hide Pip that Brooke ends up being the one that it <laughs> yeah. Aww. I guess while trying to drag some into the cover. <laughs> I, I I think I can reason this with like Pip's outfit is like super camouflaging in this <laughs> terrain. <laughs> Pip is also super super small, so he's literally <laughs> being covered by the gigantic <laughs> form of, of, uh, of Brooke. Yeah. Brooke has bright red hair. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, by the time you look back up from the cover of the tree that you have uh, taken refuge under, uh, the dragon is uh, almost exactly over your head, it's just a little bit more to the north compared to you. Um, it keeps on flying in the, in the direction it was going towards previously. Uh, its head does not turn towards you and it doesn't change the direction it's going towards until eventually 
um, the flapping of its wings uh, uh, is uh, too far to be heard, uh, and then the dragon itself uh, is out of sight. Oh, it is as big as a building. You know, they come in different sizes. They get bigger as they grow older. What? what? Okay. Winter, was this mm -hmm. one as big as the obsidian eye? <laughs> um, about, about that size, perhaps maybe a little bigger. Can I make some kind of check to like get a guess on how old this dragon is? Yes, um, anyone who, who is uh, from Plurina can, uh, can do a check like that and like use, assuming, um, and you wouldn't really notice, but like assuming that they age r roughly similarly, um, you can try to make a guess based on its uh, size. What um, kind of check would okay. that be? Um, that will be a nature check. Uh oh. Oh. It's a. Uh. 16. Okay, uh, both of you conclude that uh, um, a dragon like this, definitely centuries old. Um, and uh, uh, Pontifex would uh, theorize that it could be around a thousand. Uh, um, give or take a few centuries, more or less. Of course, that's on the assumption Sorry. that uh, this dragon is... Uh, uh, lives uh, uh, and grows in terms of size and, and, and years, uh, just like, uh, or somewhat like Plurinan dragons do. Is a thousand, like, along the lines of an adult, or is that, like, even older? Matt doesn't know, though, the age of dragons. Um, in this setting, dragons could sure. uh, live uh, all the way up to uh, um, a thousand years and a half. Um, that's, okay. however, not, like, Proven. Uh, that's not like a scientific fact that uh, people know for sure. Um, that is what it is believed based on records that are uh, not necessarily confirmed or recognized. Okay. You see, no pip, they even get bigger than that. Really? Yeah, the very old ones get to be quite large. At least back in Plurna, it could be different here, but... How old was that one? Yeah, assuming adjacency, around about a thousand, give or take. Is older than you? Yes, <laughs> I, it, uh, a little bit, yes. It's about double my age. Oh! It's like... 500 times older than me, or more. Uh, your arithmetic could maybe use some work there, but uh, yeah, it is a lot. Arith? Arith? What? I will teach you about it later. <laughs> Remind me when we are in town, I will teach you the uh, entry level calculus. <laughs> That's a very interesting curriculum for Pip. Um, basic math? And learning telepathy. <laughs> Conveniently, the two go hand in hand. <laughs> you have to get your je your jet ads out of the way before you can get to the before fun you can classes. Take your electives <laughs> of uh, telepathy. Dude, that would yeah. be a telepathy is actually a three hundred level class. I would be a straight A student if like telepathy was on the line. <laughs> But it's not. Therefore, straight C's. <laughs> Oof. Okay. I blame the school system. <laughs> uh, I will take a survival roll from whoever would like to collect food for today. Wait, no, nope. you have food today. Yeah, so day, day, uh, day five. My bad. Uh, yeah, you have still plenty of the fruits that the uh, the Ugarans have shown you um, where you can find that, that to find. Uh, so you're good for today. Uh, anything you'd like to discuss before we continue? Yeah, maybe when we're around the campfire and eating our food. Well, 
both of you, Pip and uh, Tekka, haven't been to Pluna before, right? As seen by Pip's reaction to the dragon. Both me and Pontifex have lived quite a while there. Well, Telix as well, obviously. But if you have any questions about the country... How many, how many dragons have you seen? Uh, uh Brooke has never been in the Cam uh, Campbell area, right? <laughs> yeah, well, no, he has not. I was like mm, <laughs> checking if, it, if there is has he area seen one before. Okay. Um, no, I would say this might have been my first. <laughs> okay, you would have seen a few flying overhead in Ladaria, uh, but not Plurian ones. Just a few. You've also been through uh, the colony that you, you guys are going to. Uh... Oh, wait, no, but uh, last time you were in Vera, the dragon wasn't there. Um, so you haven't seen that one yet. All right. Upon hard consideration. <laughs> <laughs> but never up too close. Should we... Fear dragons like Brook, or cheer dragons as Pip. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say I fear dragons, but out in the wild, when you don't know what very big creatures are up to, it's usually better to take a cautious stand. And if you realize that they have good intentions, you can always go ahead and greet them. In these lands, there are many dangerous things, and you never know how, well, how, how they're going to react to you. So fear might be the wrong word, but be cautious. Be cautious in general, not only of dragons. I see. How how do you do people talk to them? Like I don't I don't know if I know how to speak dragon. No, oh, have no worries. I can speak to them. I know not how to speak to all of these animals, but dragons, and yeah, no problem. The learning of their language is one of the first stepping stones of learning the arcane magics. Why? A lot of the text is written in uh, Draconic. Why? Uh, they are old. They may have been some of the founders of it. How? And that is a question we have asked ourselves for hundreds of years. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because we are inquisitive scholars. Why? That is exactly what makes us inquisitive scholars. Why, indeed? Oh. I know there was a scholar in the making of you. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because of your inquisitiveness. Pontifex will continue this as long as Pip continues this. <laughs> and he's getting for, more for excited at least the first the two. <laughs> for at least the first two, Pip was genuinely wondering, but then after that, he just wanted to see how long he could draw it. <laughs> At no point will Pontifex get bored of this. <laughs> Aww. Okay. Are you guys ready to continue? Yeah. Uh, I think in the morning, um, once they wake up, Pip would take out the snow globe again and see if the lady's still mad. <laughs> um, okay. You, um... You take out the snow globe, um, also I prematurely cleared the campfire, so sorry about that. Um, you take out the snow globe and uh, um, you look in there and uh, all the windows are still closed. Uh, mm -hmm. As in like the... the uh, what's the word for the things you use to like block the, the sunlight? Um, yeah, I think so, like the physical the ones made of wood? Shutters. Okay, yeah, the shutters are closed. 
Pip is saddened by this, but uh, I think Pip is going to like ask for to like uh, he's going to ask for a piece of paper from either Talix or or Pontifex, whoever might have like a free one around. Uh, Talix definitely does. He just um, stoked up. And Pip is going to start writing writing little messages on it for whenever those windows do open back up. <laughs> He'll okay. have some words ready. Uh, <clears throat> That's so, all. Yeah, t t tell you what, like when you check back on the on the following morning, uh, by the time you wake up, you can see that uh, the shutters are open and the woman inside the snow globe um, is uh, just doing her morning routine. Okay. Uh, all right. So the first one that Pip writes is a little scrap of paper that says "Sorry." Okay. And you sort of like put it up against the glass of the snow globe. Yeah. All right. And uh, when you put up when 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 you put up something against the the glass, uh, um, the woman quickly hides behind one of the walls, but then slowly pokes her head uh, from behind the window and looks up. Uh, and then seeing that there is uh, no danger, no blinding light, uh, um, just resumes doing what she was doing. Okay. Pip will put the other scrap of paper away. Then he'll take out the paper and reach into his pouch and grab a piece of coal uh, and write another message that says, Are you okay? When you and put then up hold the that one up. Yeah, when you hold up the paper against the snow globe, uh, the woman stops what she's doing, looks up, and after a few seconds, goes back to what she's doing. Okay. Pip's going to take that down. Write another one that says, Can you read? <laughs> <laughs> and then the woman puts out a freshly baked loaf of bread on the windowsill. Looks up, and then goes back in. Hmm. Pip will try it again in Infernal. <laughs> <laughs> in Infernal! Can you read? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for a crack. Okay. Uh, Pip's languages. Uh, this, that. Uh, ah, he tries all the ones he knows? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there will be no, no, like, reaction to any of them. Okay. Pip will just put the snow globe away as they're they're getting ready to go now. Um We've established that she doesn't understand any of Pip's or Pontifex's languages. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that she's definitively not an animal. That's true. <laughs> But we have also established that there is some form of sentience there. <laughs> it can bake bread. <laughs> okay. Six days after you left Cleon, uh, as you're following, uh, this time you're following the road, it's pretty much uh, like, um, like there isn't a lot of shortcuts you can take from, from now. Um, your the road goes through these uh, uh, grass, grassy and gently sloped hills that are on both on both sides of it, and uh, towards uh, around noon, you hear the sound of large flapping bird-like wings, and then immediately puts all of you on high alert. Uh, you look <gasps> up; it's further. Um, the sun is coming from further up ahead, exactly in the direction you're coming from, and you see uh, up in the air, not exactly a bird. Um, but rather, as it gets closer, you recognize uh, uh, an Arakokra, a person that is part humanoid and part albatross, with white feathers across her body and long black wings. Uh, she's flying right towards you, because she, she seems to be um, following the, the same road that you're walking on, and just, uh, just about 15 feet above it. Uh, um, and as she gets closer to you, she, she quickly descends and lands in front of the group. Um, this creature, unlike unlike uh, Buvan, she does have arms, and she immediately brings up a hand to her forehead in a kind of like salute, and she says, 
Greetings, I am Grykirk, an employee of Wordpoint. May I see your Wordpoint cards? And um, I don't remember if you were here for that Pontifex, but that's the name of the uh, the kind of like postal service that uh, mm. uh, the Plurnan colonies have set up uh, in uh, the peninsula in Medaria. Um, and uh, Talix and Brook have a World Point card. Uh, the World rest of you do point? not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will show him my World Point card. Um, she takes her card, she takes Talix's card, um, checks them, and then she reaches into her satchel, which has like the symbol of a. Um, uh, it's like a stylized wing that's wrapped around uh, um, what you would recognize as like the, the image of the Zasberg Peninsula. Um, and from her satchel, she pulls out a letter and she hands it to uh, Talix. And he takes it and opens it. And while he is uh, uh, busy checking that out, uh, the, the Arakrokra, um, Greek Yerk, addresses the rest of you that have not brought uh, out a card and says, are you interested in getting a card made for you? It only costs two copper pieces. Oh, yes, very much so. I uh, will need to take your information. Name, please. Oh, <laughs> uh, Pontifex was the loose all in luck. She pulls out some papers and some ink and then just hands you um, this large form and a pen. <laughs> and... Uh, um, it will take you, like, a good uh, ten minutes to fill out. Oh, I have not filled out a form in so long. <laughs> 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 this is a level of cathartic I could not experience here for so long. I thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and he, like, yeah, walks over and, like, sets out his alms box to use as, like, a desk. And he pulls out that really <laughs> fancy quill that, uh... That Talix asked before, and the Pontifex said it was like a memento of his mentor, and yeah, he pulls out the whole <laughs> shebang, so and 10 he minutes is filling is like up this 20. form meticulously. <laughs> yeah, he takes his time, and the handwriting <laughs> is immaculate. The ink is dried <laughs> to perfection. You even have like he has that... included every title that he has ever gone by. Damn. You even have like the, that pouch of sand that you like uh, pour onto the fresh ink so that it like it gets absorbed yes. and it will not smudge. Like it's it's very uh, just high quality. Um, are Tekka and Pip uh, interested? Uh, Pip is gonna watch and see what Tekka does first. I recognize your offer. No. And she does again the salute and brings up the hand to her forehead. Understood! Uh, Pip will fish in his pouch and grab the only two copper pieces that he has and hold it out. Um, he takes them and gives you back a form that is uh, uh, that matches exactly the one that uh, um, the Pontifex has. And then she says, Name, please! Um, Pip holds out the the dye that is tied in his hair in one of the braids. Shows him the one. <laughs> his name is Pip. Okay. Um, she goes to the Tekka, uh, then back at Pip, and then uh, she asks Tekka, um, Does Pip know how to write? Pip, <laughs> can you write? Uh, he shakes his head up and down and side to side in a non-committal motion. I will help you if needed. We can write. Uh, in which case, she will give you the time to fill out the forms. She doesn't seem uh, to be in too much of a rush. Um, you guys are probably going to get it done before Pontifex anyway. 
he's just giggling like a schoolgirl off in the corner writing his paper. <laughs> he's like pa like writing and pausing and like holding the quill to like his lip and like giving it a good look to make sure everything is perfect. <laughs> and then he'll give himself like a little, oh yes, that is really nice. And then he'll keep going. <laughs> it's like admiring his own writing. Sprays a little perfume on it. <laughs> <laughs> He's burning incense next to it. <laughs> um, so Pip would be like sitting on a rock with Tekka and uh, would quietly say with Squeak, Do you think I can send my stuff to Granny this way? Hmm. They seem capable of carrying large packages. Okay. All right. First one is my name. Pip. P I P. That's an easy one. What's the next box say? <laughs> uh, the form includes uh, uh, a lot of basic information about it. So, you know, name, uh, uh, last name, age, uh, um, town of residence. And a lot of information is uh, um, like you can fill. The, the purpose here is that the more you fill out, the more likely it is that if somebody needs to send you a letter and doesn't know um, the number of your card or your name or your description, uh, the letter still gets to you. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that you don't necessarily have to fill out, uh, but there, there, is, uh, there are sections for like... Uh, um, people who know you and can get in touch with you to whom uh, uh, letters can be delivered if you can't be found um, multiple towns where you can uh, be found based on where you live or where you work or where you're most likely to be found in what period of time whether you generally move with the seasons so there's like a, a lot of stuff that you can sort of skip if you don't feel comfortable or if you don't gotcha. really have an answer for any of them uh, but yeah, there's, there's like it's 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 very how do I put this? It's very invasive, <laughs> uh, but but not uh, like like none of it is required. Like mm. even even the name, if you want, it could be left out. But you can you can see um, that uh, Drikirk is uh, taking notes uh, um, and like looking up at you guys and then taking notes again and uh, um, not really hiding the fact that she's catching you out. Uh, uh, as, as you guys are filling out your forms, and then she adds uh, um, a very uh, like a very quickly drawn portrait of the two of you. Uh, she adds it to your forms once you hand it to her. That's okay. Talix is probably sketching her too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Talix seems uh, uh, after receiving the letter and checking it out. Um, he seems um, mm -hmm, like. Positively surprised, and um, in a good way or a bad yeah, way? Yeah, yeah, po po positive, like a, like a almost uh, oh, almost excited. I, <laughs> <laughs> I assume that Greek Yerk is able to make change, by the way. Yeah. Yes, okay. absolutely. Because Pontifex has four coins, and all of them are gold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that will not be an issue. So you mark down your coins, you eventually uh, deliver the forms back to her and uh, she puts them away and she does the salute again and says uh, uh, I must be going, but welcome to World Point! Uh, wait, before you go, I have a question. Uh, is this World Point only for sending and receiving goods here in Ladaria or are you able to deliver things uh, back to the mainland of Plurna? We can also deliver to Plurna! Oh! Uh, are you able to deliver to Vosil? We are able to deliver anywhere in Plurna. The, how long does it take? A ship traverses the Sea of Chaos from one continent to the other in two months. So, over two months. I see. Okay, well, thank you. Teka, why is she yelling? Hmm. To make herself heard. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else I, I can help you with? Yeah. No, I am good. That is all. Then I wish you a wonderful day. 
and she uh, she takes flight. Uh, um, you, you feel the the wind getting pushed uh, into you, um, kind of kind of uh, strongly, almost makes um, almost makes you um, step back a little bit from the force of it. Uh, and she resumes flying in the direction you just came from. Uh, you're ready to continue. Uh, yeah. Sure. It was a enlightening experience. It is nice to know such things exist here. Why does this world point require so much knowledge? It is likely so that they can find you should something be addressed to you without the person knowing uh, your place of residence or perhaps even your name. How about your magic? Can it not locate? There are magics for the purposes of locating people or places or things, but the, the range is limited, um, usually. There are some that uh, are a little more specialized for finding people over vast expanses, but uh, those are very... Uh, difficult uh, to use. It is not a lot of people who can utilize such things. Hmm. And I've come to find that magic is not able to travel from uh, Ladaria to Plurna and vice versa, or else we will be able to send messages back and forth, uh, which would be a significantly easier task. So, the quaintness of a Delivery service and letter writing at a courier. It is a. Uh, may seem a little mundane, but it is effective. I see. Why don't. Do, do you not want one, Teko? We could go back and get you a four. Hmm. No. I have no one to contact. What about people wanting to contact you? When that time comes, they can seek me out. You know, you're just so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is your view. I, I do want a t-shirt that says, Tekka is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Just that caricature of Tekka wearing sunglasses. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'd buy it. Uh, towards the end of uh, this day, uh, you guys are going to uh, reach uh, a a river uh, where you can fill up your water skins. And, um, well, of course, you're on the road, so you know you're on the air. Uh, you're going the right way, and uh, based on this landmark, you do know that you're for sure two days away from Vera. Uh, we need to look for food again? Yes. We do, unless you want to eat rations. I don't have any more, so oh. <laughs> we'll be <laughs> helping to look. Okay, bit then. Yeah, I will, uh, Pontifex will also probably be looking around. All right, I'll get the roll from each of you. Oh, I hit a 20 and then it bounced off the wood. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Um, now that you're no longer in this lush... Um, in this lush uh, swamp that's full of trees, uh, um, the availability of fruits and nuts has become a bit more scarce, but you're, uh, by the time you reach the river, you uh, you have uh, the possibility of fishing in it. Uh, um, <laughs> and despite your previous misadventures with fishing, um, you are able to uh, sip up on food for today and have some freshly fished fish. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you, you will only need to spend two rations for today. Okay, you said there's a river. Mm -hmm. Is this just like a like a freshwater river, or is this like draining from the swamp? Uh, no, no, this is freshwater. The river's Not. name is uh, Draxin. Oh, 
drag sni Okay, the copy paste is not working. Hold on, drag sning. Drag sning. Okay, yeah, while well, uh, I guess while people are fishing, uh, Pontifex is like pulling back his hood and then dunking his head into the water. It's uh, it's cool. Uh, it's clear. <laughs> Probably like a, a decent di distance away from the the group, so that he's not showing off the back of his head. But uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, he's like wandering off. You guys can see him doing it in the distance, but just far enough where you guys can't really make out the details of of his fucked up skin. Is he fishing? <laughs> <laughs> With his mouth. You know what, Pip? You should ask him. I've seen storks do that before. <laughs> Pip will not ask him. He's he is looking for rocks. <laughs> okay, you know what check it is. <laughs> you mean, like, that's also what Potifex is doing. He's looking for rocks. <laughs> Why do I why do I not have proficiency in looking for rocks? <laughs> um okay. Uh today, Pip ro the rocks and pebbles in this river, uh there's a few that are interesting, but they they all look like pebbles you already have. Do you do you have a They do not fit my rigorous standards, okay. do they? They, <laughs> do they all have to always be different? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, there is a few I, here that you already have, and they don't really have any like better qualities than the ones you already have. I'm not These gonna rocks lie, are all the, trash. <laughs> not gonna lie, finding the same rock twice is also quite impressive. <laughs> <laughs> like in terms of patterns and colors. So. Uh. <laughs> Worthless. <laughs> uh, Squeak enjoys uh, bathing in a river as well. And then we can uh, we can continue. Anything you want to discuss uh, um, in the evening? Hmm. Uh, yeah. When Pontifex returns to our camp, uh, Teka would say. Hmm. Teacher, are these habits common in your school? Hey, what are you referring to? Hmm. Cooling your mind. <laughs> yeah. Oh! Oh, you're referring to uh, the dunking uh, of my own uh, into the water? No, uh, it is uh, not an academic. Uh, practice. It is a thing of my people. I, we are a little unique, you see. Um, we enjoy being submerged for bits of time. It is a bit of uh, recreation. It is uh, soothing. It is comforting. It reminds me of home. Do you it's need just that refreshing. Oh. Uh, no. Uh, it is uh, more of a comfort or convenience thing. I do not require it. But... But I oh. prefer it. Hmm. Well, could not Talix provide you water? Oh, I can do the same. I can uh, multiply a single drop of water into several gallons. Uh, this is a simple feat of uh, magic, of divine magic. But uh, it is not the same. When you find a natural source such as this, it has just the right level of minerals that magic cannot quite replicate all the same. And, uh, with skin like mine, it be grows uh, dry and itchy and uncomfortable, and it is uh, soothing. The nature's remedy, you could say. Water provides. That I learned early. That it does. It uh, helps to solve old wounds, you could say. Hmm. 
Now that we have all gathered, I have a question of Tlerna. Do yeah. you send letters the same way as this world point? DM, is world point like a, a transcontinental thing that was like common before, or is this like a thing created since the discovery of Ladaria? World point was created for Ladaria specifically, um, but uh, the the concept of a postal service does exist in Ladarian. There's like multiple companies uh, that will do that. Uh, in Plurna? Yeah, in Plurna. Okay. Uh, yes, these things exist back in the Plurna. It is not the world point. Uh, there are numerous other ones that are used for uh, international or domestic mailing. Sending messages is much more simple by usage of magics, but... Uh, Sending packages. Okay, much more complicated. That's postal service. Hmm. Imagine and there's nothing quite now. like opening a letter and holding it in your hands before reading it. <laughs> oh, smell The Christmas it. of parchment, the smell of pink. Uh, imagine the postal syst system in Plurna to be um, more close to the one we have, like, you know, uh, in real life, where it's more about uh, knowing the address that you want to send it to rather than knowing that the, that the person you're sending it to. Where WorldPoint seems to be able to track people, um, like, as long as you give a name or description or whatever, it, like, specializes in finding people, even when they may not be at, like, a, a, a published and well-known address. <clears throat> um, so that like differs a little bit in terms of like how it works. Yeah, why do you ask? Hmm. So you trust this system? This oh no, not service. at all. Not of course. That is ridiculous. You would never trust any form of large sized corporation or organization. Especially one that has access to all of your private information. Uh, no. Trust is not the word. At least then not on my account. Why? It is a necessity. The yeah. benefits outweigh uh, the problems. I am uh, willing to allow a untrustworthy source to know my name and where I live uh, in exchange for the goods and services provided. It makes life and communication were very simple. Oh well, at least simpler. It is very convenient, especially for those who are not capable of sending uh, magical messages betwixt one another. It is a little complicated. Uh, but not that they do not take advantage of the fact by filling up your inboxes with uh, advertisements. <laughs> <laughs> I recall one time at my address in Vosil in Elianarden, I got the invite uh, to some kind of theatrical play that was supposed to take place in Zvarda, and I said, oh yes, that is just down the street, of course I will walk there. <laughs> Imbeciles. I swear they just send them out en masse to not care who they're sending it to in hopes of amassing a crowd. Disdainful. <laughs> Brickloss pr pretty hard knowing how far these things are away from each other. <laughs> These a uh, disdainful misuse of information and a good bureaucracy. <clears throat> Old man shouts at clouds. <laughs> <laughs> I do not understand your ways. It must mean you have no alternative. Uh, short of hand delivering them yourself, which is, of course, a, for lack of a better term, a huge pain in the ass. Uh, Plurna is a much bigger place, at least much bigger place compared to uh, the known or explored Ladaria. There are a lot more facilities and uh, nations, groups of people, governments, uh, 
numerous different histories and their takes on it. It is a very big and very diverse place. And sometimes traveling betwixt them is not a simple task, unless you are, of course, a gigantic postal service conglomerate who can ignore these boundaries. See, this is a very different place. That I am beginning to understand. You have made greater strides than the majority of the Plurinan populace. Most do not seek to understand, but merely to exist in it. Perhaps that is why I am on this journey, to understand. Seems that I have uh, acquainted myself with a group of scholars. A child, a polyglot of sorts that is interested in the learnings of magics and languages. A, a furbolg who is a, a surprisingly adept at the intricacies of dragon chess. Uh, <laughs> I understand you are not a babe by any uh, measure, but your skill... It, uh, your age does not betray your skill, I would say. You're wise beyond your years, and uh, you, Tekka, you are a... Not entirely sure what your people are, to be honest, but... Uh, your pursuit of understanding is admirable. Uh, where I'm from, we call it enlightenment, but... Yours is so much more pure. It is uh, uncorrupted, non-polluted by society. I would be lying if I said I was not a little jealous. Hmm. I do not understand. For you understand so much, teacher. What is there to be jealous of? Uh, the joys of discovery. Puzzles are an example I like to use. A puzzle is engaging and enjoyable and just an amazing experience until you have solved it and then once you look at the puzzle again there is no sense of joy or satisfaction for you know the answer it is solved uh, such is the way with many things in life things are intriguing until you understand them in their entirety and then they lose their uh, I suppose their beauty Life gets more dull as you understand more of it. Teacher, I hope you do not wish the same fate as Jabil. Do not uh, lose your mind. The decomposition beneath the grounds of a temple in no man's land? No, no thank you. But uh, to live on eternally inside of a tomb? Could imagine a worse fate. You would actually like to live, to live eternally, being immortal. Well, think of all of the scholars who perished before the discovery of Ladaria. Oh, how they must be turning in their graves by now, not uh, getting to experience it firsthand. I am far too old for these types of adventures, but I could not let the, the opportunity pass. I would regret it in the life after this. If I could uh, prolong that, I could experience all of the yet undiscovered wonders of the world, and perhaps life would have a bit of its banality removed. For now, I am left counting the, the years left in myself, hoping for new experiences. To just come. <laughs> I've been researching a topic called phylacteries. <laughs> 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 but it all sounds like fantastical nonsense. <laughs> you can't just read my backstory document, Pip. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I think that this conversation put Pip to sleep. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and I was softly snoring in the tree. It's like talking philosophy, essentially. Yeah. I got I have to just say the that... right angle on this scene so that you can barely see P uh, Pip's head p poking through the branches. <laughs> I have to say, though, Pontifex, it is quite amazing finding someone of your age who is still so intrigued about everything. Most people that are very old, that I know, or knew, would rather like to settle down and peacefully live the rest of their days. And, uh, I had the opportunity. Yeah, but then I was kept up at night, I would lose sleep across weeks uh, due to theories and hypotheses bouncing around in my head. Uh, the majority of which were highly taboo. Mm. Uh, but then I made the decision to pursue the arcane in addition to the divine, and it has opened up a whole new world of possibilities for me. I have learned there is so much left to know. I have published numerous works and taught classes, lectures, dissertations on everything there is to know about theology, but the arcane? seems a boundless cauldron of information that even the experts do not know all about. That is something exciting. You need to tell me more one day. Or if you want tonight, over a few rounds, a few more rounds of Dragon Chess, on how you came to learn both Arcane and Divine and potentially your experience of the last 300 plus years on Plurna? As much as I would love to go into a longer lecture, I believe it is maybe getting a little late in my throat a little hoarse from uh, all of Pip's whys before. <laughs> I've not Fair talked at length her. to that extent in many decades. Now most of my studies involve writing. So perhaps another night. Sure, it doesn't have to be today. And on that note, I believe I'm going uh, to retire for the evening. Uh, please let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Otherwise, a good night to you all. Rest and well. He's going to go lay down. Okay. That will be it for tonight? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, let me let me go fetch Pip from up here. Oop. Okay, it is day seven uh, on the road. As you get closer to Vera, one thing of note is that you come across a dozen gnomes camped within view of the road, each wearing armor and with a large rifle by their side. They glance at your group as you go, but they leave you alone. Um, you all notice, however, um, the one thing that catches your attention is that there, there's the, there is the bodies of two dead red beaks in their camp, and there is a third <gasps> one, injured but alive, Trapped inside a large iron cage. Mm. They do not seem uh, um, at all interested in uh, in uh, um, paying you any mind, so you can just continue on. Or um, is there anything you would like to do? Uh, as soon as they like get out of earshot, Pip would say, "Did you see that red beak?" We go back. Confront them. They can't have... do that to that bird. I don't understand. For what purpose? What did we say yesterday to understand? Uh, sure, but uh, if they have use or need of this bird for whatever reasons, I mean, we fish for animals, we hunt them for 
survival purposes, perhaps there is a similar one. And if not, are you seeking to harm an individual for the sake of harming another? It is a vicious cycle. But then why a cage? Perhaps to prolong its life. And it'll probably run away. Suffering. Or that. They heard it and they left it hurt. Okay, yes. If you uh, if you all wish to return to confront them, I'm I have no authority to tell you no. Are you sure you want to do that? Is this why you hate gnomes, Brooke? I never said I hate them. I just <laughs> unnecessarily like them. They're said... quote unquote not his preferred race. <laughs> you said they were your least favorite kind of people. That's not what I said. So <laughs> you need to learn to listen and not twist my words. <laughs> I tried to say the other day that I like that I hate small people, which would include you, by the way, Pip. And I don't hate you. So, I mean, that is not the reason why I don't like them, but I'm not surprised by their behavior. So if you really want to go back, be careful on how you approach them. Try not to upset them, because those weapons they are carrying can hurt. And they were able to subjugate these red beaks. We have encountered them ourselves. It's no simple task. So maybe a diplomatic approach. Pip, I will be with you. Okay. Don't get me wrong. I'll be with you as well. Just be careful. Um, can, can you do the talking, Tekka? <sighs> yes. And Tekka starts walking towards them. Okay. You approach. Brook the... follows right behind. You approach the gnome camp, and as soon as like you're bending the road, you turn around uh, and you're bending the road, and you, you begin to approach. Um, they all stop talking. They all uh, uh, lift their their heads and look in your direction. And um, a couple of them stand up, and they have their rifles uh, held. Uh, not pointed at you, but they, they're holding them like a, across uh, horizontally their bodies. Um, so like, sort of like, um, well, you could take it as a threat uh, or uh, not necessarily, but at least they're not pointed at you. Uh, one of them, his hands uh, free, he's not holding a weapon, um, stands up and uh, crosses his arms. Uh, he has these, uh, uh, this uh, deep dark uh, uh, green hair that is like collected in this high ponytail um, and as he watches you approach before you're you're really like up to him you're still like a good uh, maybe 20 feet away from him um, he, he shouts uh, you got any business with us? listen why capture a creature in pain? Um, the gnome uh, narrows his eyes as he looks at the person who talked, uh, and then uh, briefly scans the group uh, uh, before before answering. Why do you care? Is this yours? Did you send it? No. But I sense its pain. If nothing else, make it stop. Um, one of the gnomes in the back says, Yeah, it's what I've been telling you, we should just shoot it dead. Uh, the gnome that's been talking to you raises a hand and says, Not until we found its owner. You are cruel. We are cruel? We're keeping the roads safe from these. They attack travelers, just like you. And that makes it right to cause pain? There seems to be a bit of, of a misunderstanding here. We 
are helping you. I do not see you helping us. <sighs> Look. Just... Keep going. You don't want any trouble now, do you? You are the one causing trouble. <laughs> Roll an intimidation check. Yep. Are you holding your saw? Hold your saw. Hold your saw. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no one tried to stop him, huh? Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> then we pay the price. <laughs> more and more <clears throat> of the gnomes in this camp are beginning to stand up and approach a little bit. None of them like b brandishing the rifles, but they all have them. Most of them, they have them like on their backs. A few of them have, have them on their hands, but just like held and not pointed at you. Um, and uh, as they begin to gather, all of them being sh uh, just, you know, they're gnomes, they're very short, uh, uh, shorter than pretty much all of you, and uh, most of them are even shorter than Pip. Uh, but you've all heard of the, the, uh, the power that their weapons have that could uh, instantaneously kill a person from feet, uh, hundreds of feet away. Um, so despite their size, the fact that you're both outnumbered by them and that they, each of them has in their hands or on their backs a weapon that could take your life like instantaneously is uh, uh, definitely intimidating. And they're approaching in a way that makes it clear that like um, none of them are particularly are having the adverse reaction that a lot of people tend to you, Tekka. Um, but instead, like there's, there's a few that kind of point and whisper and uh, until one of them does like comments uh, like out loud enough so that you can hear it and it's like hey isn't that one of those like they demons and it started like whispering like that and the one who's been talking to you um mm, oh, hold up a second the one who's been talking to you says tell you what can you uh talk to those those people that command the birds do they speak their language? I do not speak with them. We are passing by and saw what you did. And you want us to kill this thing? Anything but this. I don't think he wants to mainly, he wants you guys to kill that thing, but if you have to keep it in pain, or if you have to hurt it, at least make sure that it's not in pain or not visible to the public eye. For example, we have a little kid with us, and a little kid coming across the street looking at a creature like this is properly upset. Pip, do you look upset? And uh, Pip right now is kind of shaking, um, both with fear and anger and is currently pulling his shawl like further up his face to cover his mouth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A squeak at this point has hidden beneath the folds of the cloth. Like if you have no further use for this bird and would be willing to kill it. Give it to us, we take care of it, and it's not your problem anymore. It is not a problem. It is bait. As soon as those people show up and come get their bird, we can have a ward with them and scare them off. It'll stop attacking people on our route. You've Look, killed two of their birds. Themselves. You've killed two of their birds. That is a message enough. Not if they don't come and see them. They will realize that the birds aren't coming back. Look. Um. Tell you what. 
fine. We'll kill it right here, right now. Mm. And you get that kid to turn around and not look since he cares so much. But I'll do it on one condition. And yeah, he points at Tekka and he says, I want your name. I think Brooke would uh, put his hand into his pouch, take out five gold, throws it towards him. How about this? You already have two birds. Use those at spade. Take those five gold and give me that bird. If that person who belongs that bird I will tell, comes and tries to get it, I will tell them to pay you a visit. Um, he does this like brief nod with his head towards the ground, uh, and one of the gnomes goes to pick up the coins and counts it out. Uh, um, then they glance at one another. Roll persuasion. Uh, oh no. Can I roll my inspiration? Oh, no. <laughs> I would like to roll my inspiration. Oh my god. You sure Never can. Rolls today. Toss it into the, the dice tower. Uh-huh. Um, it will not count, however, the bonus. It doesn't do it uh, in chat. Oh, oh, oh. These dice are spooky. They're very right. bouncy. So it's uh, one total. This. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah, oof. Ugh. Um as the uh, the gnome ha that picked up the coins hands them to the person that's been talking to you. Um he grabs the coins and uh, um pockets them and says uh, um allies? No, no deal. If we kill it, though, you can take it. You can do whatever you want with its body. Then I want my five gold back. <laughs> what five gold? Uh, Is there how a gun? How far are these people from us? They're about ten feet away. Um, the guy, it, does there seem to be a leader of this group that's talking to us? Yeah, yeah the, the, the one that's been talking to you seems to be, kind of be in charge. The, uh, the, is, is the leader one the one that just said what gold? Yeah. Yeah, I think Pontifex is going to talk to this man telepathically. Um, <laughs> this is one way, by the way, I learned things cannot reply. So this oh. is just him hearing, him hearing Pontifex in his all the while Pontifex is giving a friendly smile um, <laughs> and in his head when he says what goal uh, he hears hold on I've got the g <laughs> him uh, hello I am one of these people that you have encountered uh, they do not know what I am telling you this one that you are trying to take the gold from if you are familiar with the phantoms, he is one of them. If you would direct your gaze to his wrists, you will see cloth covered in blood. That is a ritual that he performs for amusement. This is not the man that you would rob a mere five coins from. I would recommend to you that you come up with a way to do as he says, without losing face amongst your men. I understand pride is a powerful thing. This is not worth it. So, um, and in the event that you and your men decide to make this more hostile, I'm sure you are familiar with the magics of the elves. It is not something you wish to face. The gnome is like in a middle of talking when he just sort of stops 
and uh, he's like turning his head around like he's listening to something so that's what all of you can like see that's happening and there's a bit of like an uncomfortable silence that perhaps you guys that are failing with like brooks are still asking to to get the gold back and some of the gnomes in the back have started to like yell at you guys to just get lost and not to like don't you dare fuck with us uh kind of thing uh while the the person that's been talking to you guys stays just quiet sort of like listening uh to something and pontifex you also get an intimidation check good luck buddy thanks <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I'm gonna inspiration die that. <laughs> you just got it. This seems important. Okay. You can shake it a little bit before you let go. I hope this isn't how we all die. <laughs> <laughs> not while Jason is not here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah, these dice are so- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is a test. you gave us her rigged. <laughs> <laughs> they're so bouncy, boing, boing, boing. And they're cursed to land on threes. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> okay, and the rest of you can see that the, the gnomes that's been addressing you, like his face is starting to turn, uh, um, a slight like redder color and his ends he's starting to like fidget near the near the uh, the the handle part of the rifle um as uh he he looks at the um at pontifex which to the rest of the group is going to be like sort of like out of nowhere because pontifex hasn't really sa said or done anything he's just like smiling and then like points a um a shaky finger at him and uh wait uh does he know that he comes from you pontifex just double checking i mean i like, haven't spoken so he doesn't know his voice. Okay, it's, there's like no like magical like, like the the target doesn't know it comes from you, right? Uh, right, right. Okay, so okay. So they okay, would okay. just have the guess that this is either the big blue guy, uh, the guy in the hat, or the kid. Right, right, right. Um, he would he would point his uh, his uh, shaking finger at the tech guy in that case. Uh, uh, and he says, "All right, now you listen up to me. I'm going to tell you this." One time, it's your last chance to fuck off right now before we start shooting at your asses. You hear that? Then we'll give the kid a reason to cry. How many of them are there? Uh, about a dozen. Uh, hold on, let me look. There's exactly 12 of them. I would turn to Pip and take a... We should probably leave. Or this isn't going to end nicely. You see Tekka, like, clenching his teeth. Both hands clutching the quarterstaff. Fine. You hold the power now. So we yield. And he steps backwards, but locks eyes with the leader of the no group. Mm -hmm. Everyone follow. Now, <laughs> Tekka's right. or Pip's Pip's face is red, and he's like his eyes are are starting to water. And can Pip try and very subtly, behind his back, drop a dagger on the ground? Um, without like being seen. Mm -hmm. That's what you mean. Yeah, roll a slight event check. <sighs> I'll use inspiration for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it's going to be a three. This if this dice lands on a three, again. I demand a refund. <laughs> Broken dice. <laughs> hey, let's go. It's 22. 22? Okay. 
Oh god. Uh, there. Here it is. Okay. Uh, and you... Here you are. Okay. Uh, Pip, you, um, you let go of... Uh, do you have more than one dagger? Just one. Okay, you let go of your dagger and uh, uh, you picked a, you you like shuffled just a little bit to the side where there was like more um, an area where like the grass was a little bit thicker and a little bit taller. So uh, it's a, it's a very soft thud uh, that is like covered by Taka's shout as you like timed it just right. Um, as far as you can tell, no gnome has like turned their head toward the toward the uh, you. And then Pip will turn around. Okay. Uh, your group returns to the road uh, and uh, uh, begins to to uh, walk to the north in the direction you were originally heading towards. I don't go too far yet. Mm -hmm. Did Pontifex see you drop the knife? Uh, not I'll like, with leave your... that to you entirely. Yeah, no, no. Based on your passive perception, none of you would have. Okay. Uh, but what does Pip want to do? Uh, as we're about 50 to 60 feet away, um, Pip will just say through Squeak, All right, start running. And Pip is going to catapult that knife at the bird. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, catapult, catapult, catapult. Uh, um, it's an attack roll. It's just going to try and end its suffering. It's a deck save. <laughs> if the object will strike a creature, the creature must make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Um, the red beak is caged, so it doesn't have much room for dodging, uh, and it's also injured. Okay. Um, do you like? Do you have um, to like turn back and see where you're aiming? So you're watching, uh, like as it roughly, happens. Roughly, uh... <laughs> yeah. All right. And you're fifty feet away, sixty feet away. Mm-hmm. Uh, the entire group is going to hear the. Um, Pained squawk uh, coming from the bird. Uh, roll your damage. Hope this does it. <laughs> oh man, we haven't traumatized the kid enough. That's awful fishing. damage. <laughs> uh, here we go. And uh, in in reaction to this uh, to this sound, uh, um, suddenly all all the gnomes uh, who were like basically all of them had their attention to the group, uh, uh, just watching as you left, uh, um, they all turn towards the bird in the cage, and they um, uh, hear the voices rising from the camp as they all uh, turn around and start gathering around the around the cage, uh, looking at what happened and. Uh, Finding that there's this uh, small dagger just lodged uh, into the neck uh, of the red beak. Uh, um, how long do you linger after this? We are running immediately after. <laughs> running. <laughs> You're all running. Okay. Like as soon as this happens and all the gnomes turn around, you, you guys begin to run. Um, da, 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 da. Okay. Um, I would like all of you to roll a constitution check um and let's see like if you're basically sort of like to check if you're fast enough uh, uh and for how long you're able to run before like you're you're tired and i'll just give like talix a roll too what that's not what talix is hey. yeah <laughs> ah, J 
Jason is in the stream. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Jason. Hi, Jason. <laughs> he's on. Uh, yeah, he's. Oh my gosh, I haven't said it's on stream. Uh, but yeah, Jason is working. That's why he's not here with us today. Uh, but hi, glad to have you on hi, your Jason. break. Hi, Jason. I rolled high for you. I just did the saddest you. thing I could ever do. <laughs> <laughs> we burned five gold and three inspiration die for this. <laughs> <laughs> just to uh, kill to a kill bird. bird. And that was the worst outcome. <laughs> and, uh, da, 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 da. Calculator. Nope. Am I missing someone? Oh, uh, you rolled a six, Austin? Yep. Okay. And you guys just started <laughs> Jason, running. Jason, I hate all of um, you. I hope you didn't kill that bird. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> bad news. <laughs> <laughs> In the Twitch chat, I hope you didn't kill that bird immediately followed by oh. <laughs> uh, do you follow the road or you uh, do you leave it? Because there is plenty of like cover in terms of trees. Uh, if you were to to like uh, wander off a little bit to the eastern side. Yeah, I think we should leave it. Yeah, we probably should leave it for a little bit. Okay, uh, you leave the road, and um, you're 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 um, doing your best to kind of like help Pip and Pontifex along. Pontifex being a little slow, and Pip like struggling on this uh, on this terrain. Where like uh, uh, as soon as you leave the road, it's a lot more rocky um, and uh, a little muddy too. And you um, you pull you pull them up shoes, right? over a hill. Nope. Oh yeah, he has no shoes. Um, there you go. And you, you seek cover and you run as long as you can until you're all out of breath. And, um, and you have to, to just stop and you listen and you glance back through the trees. Um, and everybody roll a perception check. Okay. And you, um, as you're catching your breath, you just wait on high alert, listening, watching. Some time passes, and uh, you resume moving again, again as soon as you're you have caught your breath, and you uh, you keep going until uh, uh, this was. Let me double check. I think this was towards the end of the day. Huh? Yeah. So uh, as the game begins to to set uh, about uh, uh, about 15 minutes after this all has transpired, uh, you're still moving, and um, you're beginning to slow down and just uh, stay away from the path. And so far, it doesn't seem like you haven't seen or heard um, anyone being after you. Um, if you would like to to N now that you're you're pretty sure you're a safe distance away, if you'd like to talk, um, now is the time. But you're like I'm assuming you keep being on a move. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. You have nothing to apologize for. I couldn't I couldn't let it live like that. That that was you? I'm sorry. It didn't deserve it. Tekka puts a hand on Pip's shoulder. You did the best, the best you could. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. The guilt is with them. Do you hear me? <laughs> if I was stronger, I could have saved. I could have saved it. Don't say that. I'm stronger. I couldn't save it. They simply had the numbers advantage. You didn't hear what it was saying. <laughs> 
No. You didn't hear what its cries meant. I had to. I'm sorry. No. You have suffered enough today, Pip. And you did the right thing. It doesn't suffer anymore. It's in peace. <laughs> Everyone, today has been enough. We need to rest and grief. Understood? Of course. You're right, I agree. That seems appropriate. As you uh, set up camp for the night, uh, on the... Um... If that's something you're concerned with, uh, and uh, um, Brooke in particular would uh, uh, be very familiar with this, but you probably don't want to start a fire if you were that they might perhaps be following you. Because, like, the smoke would uh, could easily um, mm -hmm. pinpoint your situation. Um, meaning that today you're, uh, you're in the cold, you rely on your... Uh, Right. Uh, you rely on your blankets and your bedrolls to keep you to keep you warm, and you sort of like huddle up all together, um, eating the food that you have with you from your rations. Uh, as you um, you wouldn't dare leaving like uh, going around uh, uh, looking for food and uh, risking leaving like a trail that leads up to you. Uh, if you'd like to to role play anything else, go ahead. I feel like maybe while everyone's kind of eating in silence, um, yeah, the tactless professor will probably speak up. <laughs> uh, I am not so good with uh, these wholly emotional responses to things, but uh, you did what you believed to be the, was the right thing, and I think it was plain to see that those uh, individuals for less than savory. Uh, these types of people are uh, the types that some of us wish to escape, to leave behind in Plurna. But as I was speaking of the postal services, uh, there is corruption everywhere, including those that claim to protect others around them. Hmm. Yeah. Hopefully, along our travels, uh, as we go to uncover more of Jamiel's past and memories, uh, perhaps we will become stronger for it and uh, may have a, develop a new uh, personal goal of trying to preserve um, the purity of this place. Uh, those gnomes, I am assuming they are a division that is straight from Stasil itself. Uh, they are known to be warlike people, so uh, this sort of reaction was somewhat expected. I did not feel it was appropriate to announce it as such, as I did not wish to talk you down from doing what you thought was right. But uh, I do feel a little guilty that... We have lost coin and time and incurred grief uh, due to my silence. Don't worry about the coin. I. You could see it just from walking past them that these people were up to no good, and it doesn't matter how much coin I would have left there, how many words I would have used, or what measurements I would have taken. They wouldn't have given up that bird. 
And right. sometimes there are people like that. I don't want to say that all gnomes are like this, but I have encountered many with the same personality traits, with the same greed, and with the same attitude towards other people's life. So, those are those yeah. unfortunate souls who derive a pleasure or a sense of superiority from the suffering of others. It is uh, an unfortunate fact of life that these people exist and that people like us and people like that bird they must suffer for it. But along my long life, I have I come to the realization that there is no uh, saving these people who live for the cruelty of it. It is ingrained into their being. I'm not so quick to call something lost uh, that people cannot change, but those people, I believe they are an exception. I agree. So once again, Pep, you did the right thing. Pip right now is sitting near Tekka, and that that shawl that usually comes up to his mouth is now all the way up his face as he's just holding it against his face while he's sort of in a uh, a, a kneeling position as his his knees are up close to his chest, and he's just sitting there. You would think that once you leave Plurna and come to this land for a new start, for exploration or whatever you're after, old habits and the old ways would be left on Plurna. But during my work as a phantom, I have encountered a <laughs> um, few of these situations where Uh, where people were not doing the right thing. And usually it's my job to help those people in need out. Sometimes it's not going the way you planned or wish for it to go. Uh, on the topic of, uh, well, uh, what you asked of me the other night, uh, tales from my long life, uh, there are all of the positives, the things I have learned, the adventures I have been on, the people I've met, and the friends I've made and lost along the way. Uh, but there is always a other side of the coin, so to speak. And I feel like... Uh, perhaps now is an appropriate time to tell one of my uh, less fortunate stories, as I believe there is a, a lesson that could be learned. Uh, and judging uh, you all based on your actions and how you handled the situation, uh, you all have uh, good hearts uh, and sound judgment. Uh, it is one thing to be a good person and also a fool, and another to be a good person and yet be able to make rational decisions. A fool would have thrown themselves at that battalion of gnomes uh, following what they believe to be right and would have died a nameless martyr that no one would remember and no lesson would be learned. Uh, the wiser person could encounter a situation such as that, voice their opinions and feelings as need be, and then withdraw when there is nothing to be gained to perhaps spread the lesson another day. Uh, I am one such person in my past. Uh, and uh, Pontifex is going to um, make a light in his hand, but make it dim um, 
and give it like a uh, like a green tint. Um, okay. I can do that. Uh, so he makes like a, a dim green light to one of his hands and he's going to uh, pull back his hood um, and probably one of his sleeves um, to kind of reveal the bare skin. Uh, on the back of his head, like basically the entirety of, uh, of his head short of his face um, and along the length of his arms are uh, like severe burn scars. Um, the skin is like complete scar tissue and uh, like pockmarked, um, and it's it's not a good look. Uh, when I was a boy, uh, I was an orphan. You could say I never knew my parents or where I came from. I was left on the doorstep of a uh, Sort of, at least that is what I was told. I believe they found me and took me in. But uh, it's a young married couple of half-elves. I consider them to be my parents. But uh, they were the kind souls, the accepting type. They took me into their home and raised me as their own. Uh, and I I lived a, a young childhood, a toddlership, uh, buried in love and attentiveness. Uh, I learned the teachings of, well, I suppose Evakana, this is before the Jade Council, you see. This is before the founding of the Pantheon as we know it. Uh, and I went into servitude, uh, working, you know, around the town to help my family pay for the things that they needed in Nesredora. Uh, in my youth, there was another child, a boy, a human boy. Uh, his name is one that I can never forget. It was a Glyn Chairman. It's a young human. Uh, whenever he found that uh, my particular type of people breathe through our skin, uh, we don't breathe through our nose or our mouth with conventional lungs, uh, and that we are partially amphibious. This has to do with uh, my standing in the rain and the dunking of myself into rivers. Uh, this child, this bully, and his friends, uh, well, they outnumbered me. They overtook me, and they bound me in ropes. Uh, they stripped me bare and then covered the entirety of my body with linens, a cloth, and they proceeded to thoroughly drench them all in vinegar. Uh, after the material was sufficiently soaked, I could no longer breathe, uh, except for inhaling the vinegar through my skin. Uh, imagine a fish trying to survive in those situations. Uh, I nearly suffocated from the experience. Uh, my lungs were all but destroyed by the fumes, uh, but I was rescued by a passing cleric a member of the Vakanath clergy at the time, uh, and he managed to run the children off and save me from my bindings. Uh, it is only through the use of his healing magic uh, at his local chapel that uh, my lungs were restored and my life was saved. Uh, these burns that you can see uh, cover the vast majority of my body, uh, I believe my face was spared because these children wished to see the expression on it. Uh, it's from that day forward that I pledged uh, my work to the local church and I became a cleric. And I received uh, the divine blessings that a cleric is able to bestow at a relatively long age. I like to believe that this was a Vakanath's way of acknowledging that I uh, had a pure soul and that I was destined to help others the way that the cleric had helped me. Uh, these burns serve as a sort of reminder that uh, cruelty exists in this world, but so does uh, kindness, selflessness. I believe that uh, your actions, Pip, I believe that they fall into the latter category. You are akin to the cleric that saved my life when I was suffering. 
but merely in another direction. You did all that you could. You could not solve the situation entirely, as we could not free the bird, as I was not freed from these burns. But uh, you saved its life all the same. Oh, Professor. I'm sorry. And he'll, uh, he'll pull his hood back over his head and pull his sleeves down and kind of dim out the light. So, as I was saying, there is a great loss to be had, but there is also a lesson. Uh, there is teachings you can gain from this, and you can spread this to other people throughout your life, and perhaps they will go on to pay your kindness forward, as I seek to do. Uh, the child, the bully, his entourage, and the priest are all long dead. Uh, their lifespans are all significantly shorter than my own, you understand, but I still seek to pay forward his kindness uh, since that day. So hopefully you can use these events as a lesson. What? Why are people so mean? Some of them are. Uh, it is based on circumstance, the way they were raised, the places they grew up, their society. All of these can be determining factors of what can make a person cruel, but uh, I believe that some of them are merely born with it. Uh, regardless of their circumstances, this is the way they will always go. Some can be saved, but others cannot, and are frankly not worth the effort. All we can do is try to spread enough goodness into the world to offset the, the evil that comes from so few people. I find it is the, the acts of maliciousness that uh, speak more loudly in the courses of history. It takes a great deal of goodness to offset a modicum of maliciousness. And so I hope that you will live your life uh, in the pursuit of spreading goodness and well-being and comfort uh, in the hopes of offsetting this single day of discontent. I'm really glad I met you guys because because this world is so full of really bad people. I mean, the boys they they almost killed you and 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 those gnomes they they said really mean things to Tekka. They call, they called him a, a demon. And he's one of the nicest people I've ever met. And, and, and people tried to kill me before, and they would have if Granny hadn't come. And I don't. We're just different. That's all. And, and people are mean to Brooke because because he can do he can do the magic and he's a phantom. And why are people mean to you, Talix? <laughs> 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 uh, uh, <laughs> well, I'm, yeah, I'm not Jason, going to. Why are people mean to you? <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to speak from uh, for, for Jason. Uh, Is it because of your hat? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell says, you later. I'll tell you later. <laughs> 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 when when I was when I was 10 I and I was still living at the church 
I went outside and and some of the other boys some of the other boys were were throwing rocks at a dog and I got really mad and I I I pushed one of them without touching them and and they called me a freak and they started hurting me and the boy the 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 boy that was attacking me he he got he got lunged at by the dog the dog came to my rescue but but when the priest came out when the priest came out they killed the dog these were clerics of life but they killed the dog Why? Yeah, Talix, why? <laughs> Pip, I guess sometimes, not sometimes, but been like that on Pluranet, it, it is the same thing here on Ladaria. People are scared of things they don't understand and they don't know. And sometimes even of things that are just different. There is no other reasoning behind it except for that it that it intimidates them. We back in Plurna we had a war that was raging over <laughs> that was raging over hundreds of years just because of different usage of magic of a simple thing like that and even over here where you think after the whole after the whole war is over and has been for 50 years when people use the magic of this land which is new again it's the same thing over and over again so I guess take what Pontifex said to you to heart. Use the kindness you have in your heart and spread it. That is the only way to stop whatever they're doing or even convert lost ones. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Brooke. Thanks, Professor. Sure. I just don't want you to uh, come out of this experience uh, with a heart of malice or ill intent. It is okay to uh, dislike or even hate uh, those gnomes, those people like that, but uh, you must understand that they are simply living by their nature. They have a nature of cruelty, which is one that you do not align with, but you could say they do not have control over themselves. So I just want you to come out of this experience uh, for the better rather than regressing down to their level. Oh, but I do hate them. Yes, I have spent uh, centuries, actually, trying to get over my own hate. And Pip holds out the, the cloth doll that you've seen him carry, and just looks at it down in front of him and says, If I had something of his, of that gnome's, I could hurt him. I could hurt him really bad. But I won't. I won't. Is that us the right decision? 
Just because you got hurt, it doesn't give you the right to hurt others. If you're hurt, you have the power to make the judgment whether you forgive or how you handle the situation. But if you hurt others, take an arm, kill them, take part of their family, that decision is no longer in your hands. You are basically chained to their forgiveness. There's nothing you can do afterwards anymore. Except for hoping and waiting till they eventually forgive you. And from experience, hurting other people is not something that gives you any satisfaction for whatever they did. And I find that if you were to do something like remove a person like him, they are usually replaced by someone of similar values. Uh, it is much more important to, instead of attacking the individual, to attack the ideology, uh, which you learn in academia is a very difficult thing to kill. Uh, it would have been a simple matter to simply kill that one known. He is under the belief that it is all 12 of them against the five of us, when in reality, all we likely had to do is just kill him. The others would either uh, bow out or seek revenge. It is part of the known nature, I find, in history to seek revenge, so I believe that we made the simple choice, but... Uh, Killing a person is so easy. Uh, killing the things that made them who they are is a much more difficult. It's a lifelong venture. So perhaps you can take your idea of if you had the possession of his, you could hurt him individually. You should consider uh, ways to make that more broad, more of an umbrella. If you had a piece of what made him who he is, then perhaps you could injure that or kill that instead. Hmm. Injuring or hurting the gnome will not bring the bird back or grant its freedom. You're right. I'm... I'm sorry I made a mess out of all of this. Thanks for... Thanks for everything. And... Tekka, I'm... I'm sorry, Tekka. I... I wish I could have helped. I... No. I w- Pip, stop! This was their mess. And mine. I get it. I have felt your guilt, but it is not yours to bear. And the rage you are feeling, I am feeling it too. Pip, there's only one thing I can tell you that might alleviate your heart. One night when I was young and very, very upset with everything. My mom told me something by the fire. Would you like to hear it? Yeah. (sighs) 
She said to let my rage flow with the wind and watch it spin new storms tomorrow. Don't keep it inside you. Use it for something good. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Good. I think I get it. Okay. We you. should take rest and give time for our thoughts. You all have given us so much to think about. As the conversation dies down and you all huddle up together for warmth and uh, uh, sleep eventually takes over, um, we're going to take a 10 to 15 minute break. Oh, good. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> wow, guys. <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll see you in a bit. All right. Mm -hmm. And we're back. Hello. 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 No. <laughs> we're just talking about how Austin has a very interesting summary that he'll have to do next session. Oh. Yep. I, I think I'm going to frame it as like a therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. And your therapists uh... are Pontifex and Brooke? I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> hey, Tekka is a good, would make for a good therapist. True. Oh. Good therapist. <laughs> You have no idea what he's recommending that you do, but you still feel just better after talking to him. Huh. But Tekka would recommend you like six different plants to partake in that might help <laughs> with your your emotional state. And they There's do. There's a mushroom in the swamp <laughs> that helps. That's not vague enough. Sends <laughs> you to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> we call it antelope mushroom. Oh, that's good. That's yeah, the callback, huh? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Um Okay. So, uh before we continue, uh I just wanted to here you go, Pip. This is a little non-summary inspiration. Oh, whoa! Oh, drama whoa. inspiration? Yeah. Uh, suffering like, inspiration. Like a roleplay inspiration. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go from here. So um, Aww. you've uh, during the night. The night has been very uncomfortable, partially because it's been cold. You were all stressed out, uh, and when you were uh, taking your turns. Uh, um, staying awake during the night, like every, every little sound uh, um, was making you jump. But ultimately, when morning comes, uh, uh, you have been uh, disturbed by nothing. And you're able to resume your journey. You sort of like don't really return to the main road for the first half of it. Uh, imagine it like here on the map. Uh, you're basically like here and then going here uh, instead of like going back to the road. Um, but like you're, you're so close to the main road that it, it's uh, um, it's not difficult at all to uh, stay on track either way. There is no long, no longer such a like um, a thick canopy of leaves over your head, so you can um, that to the point where you, it would make it difficult to even tell where the sun is and what direction you're going. Um, so you're proceeding this way, 
eventually, uh, as you finally find the road again, uh, and you follow it for a few more hours, uh, there's going to be a wooden construction that comes into view. Uh, two towers connected by a suspended bridge built over the road. There's multiple guards that stand on the bridge and also underneath it. And um, they merely nod as you approach, with uh, one of them loudly welcoming you to Vera. Uh, but uh, none of you pay too much attention to the guards, however, as your attention is uh, swept away to the glistening metallic head of an enormous dragon behind a large wooden wall just a little bit further ahead. Oh. 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 oh gee. Oh wow. Help. Help. <laughs> it's so much. <laughs> oh. Um for reference, why do we do this? So I'm just gonna copy. Oh, your it's not tokens. like a head made out of metal like decoration. It's like the actual dragon? Uh-huh. Oh shit. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, Wait, is that a real so dragon? Cool there, let me at least scale you down. I love houses that are bigger on the top than the bottom. It's just an aesthetic <laughs> that I really enjoy. It is nice, this... yeah. Why did they come back up? Uh, Alright. Yeah! Is that, a, is that a Tudor style thing, or is it like more fairy tale esque? The houses? Like that that building style where the house gets oh. bigger as you go up. Um, I I guess it 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 kind of is. It does uh, um show up in. Hmm. I don't know. We're just appreciating the architecture in this in this town. Uh, oh, okay, you're about the right size. Ah, uh, yeah, approximately. So you're arriving from this direction. So small. Uh, the buildings of Vera are tall and lithe, often taking up more vertical space than horizontal. Uh, this colony has been erected in a more natural way than the overly planned Cleon, developing from a lively center that slowly expanded outward. But it does share with Cleon a, a varied population that would be unusual to see in most Plurinan countries. Uh, the large, fenced-off area on the eastern side of town is certainly its most eye-catching landmark. What would you like to do? Um, what... What nation is this? Is this Campbell? Yes. Campbell. Okay. Is that a real dragon? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. It's a real dragon. You see its uh, its head sort of like poking up from this area. Um, and it might be like <laughs> curly back on itself and like out of sight. I think that's exactly where Pontifex and Pip are going. <laughs> you run past like his main plaza with a fountain in the center, um, past uh, the past the church where uh, people are sort of like gathering in front of it. But you, like you just you take off pretty much right away towards this direction. Uh, imagine that there is like a this um, um, like a gate here, but it's currently open, so it's it's a uh, at this size. Um, and there's multiple, there's multiple guards stationed in front of this, uh, but it's also a few curious bystanders, just like you, sort of like gathering in front of the, of this enormous wall, hoping to occasionally uh, catch a glimpse uh, of this dragon. Um, the dragon in question has these uh, like dull. Uh, brown reddish colored scales that are like fading to a, to almost like a more orange yellowish um, hue and many of the scales have like turned uh, uh, this dark deep gray from uh, um, what you wouldn't know to just be a straight up age um, this is a very very old dragon yeah I guess Pontifex is gonna straight up shout in Draconic Hello! <laughs> <laughs> he like holds his hand up or something. Hmm. 
I'm sure that uh, I'm sure he knows like a traditional Campbell greeting given the proximity. Right, right. Um, how do I make you roll for like how loud you can shout? Uh, on, like, uh, I have the thaumaturgy cantrip, so my voice I can shake walls with my voice. <laughs> okay, you say hello at first, so you didn't really get any reaction, but it feels like it's it's just because uh, at this time it's quiet. Uh, um, there's a lot of people. Uh, in the plaza, in the market that's far behind you, um, and a few people gathered around you, so like your voice is just one of many. And when you realize there has been absolutely no reaction, you just uh, um, how, how do you go about casting thaumaturgy? What does it look like? Uh, he like says hello and gets no reaction, and I think even like looks down to Pip, and like Pip didn't even really hear him because of the, <laughs> the clamor of the crowd. So I think he he like like grabs his uh, his little goat amulet with his hand and like holds it up to his lips and like gives it a little smooch and then and <laughs> hello <laughs> just kind of echoes throughout the town <laughs> i'm sure i had a voice gimmick and, i could do and like lots of hello! people lots of people <laughs> turn back uh hearing an old man shouting something that to to many of them is uh nonsensical and some of them uh, seeming, seemingly like understanding what you said and like turning back to see if they were the person that was being addressed. Uh, all the people that are nearest to you, they just jump, uh, surprised <laughs> by the like sudden noise and uh, uh, there's a bit of like, the, as some of them move away from you, uh, you're sort of like the, the, the center of attention, just your group uh, and then everybody else around them. And uh, uh, the enormous dragon on the other side of this wall, um, who was like, um, he had like gone out of your um, of your view for a moment, sort of like leaning behind uh, this fence and being just uh, too far in the back, so that from the, that angle you couldn't quite see. Um, and as you, um, um, after Pontifex uh, manages to, to shout at such incredible volume um, like that, um, the dragon's head pokes back above the, the fence and sort of extends a little bit to the side so that it's like coming here uh, from this area where the gate is uh, straight up open. And uh, uh, Pontifex, you receive uh, a nod from the dragon. And then, then... he'll look down to Pip. <laughs> he nodded at me. Yes, he seems uh, relatively friendly. Oh, this is a great learning opportunity. I have seen two dragons. Two days ago, I hadn't seen any of them. Is this the same dragon that we saw before? No, the one you saw before was okay. white. Uh, uh, so they, there's ah. like no doubt that uh, they're two completely different dragons. Although the size is about the same. Uh, this one might... Well... Hmm. No, it's hard to tell, like, if uh, if one was bigger than the other, but they were roughly the same size. This one looks older, though. Well, it's hard to tell. Like, it's... They were they were both old. Um, okay. Actually, no, you rolled really uh, high earlier. Yeah, uh, I this might like be older, yeah? or something. This is, uh, this is possibly older. And this one has the scales that are actually, like, changing color from how old it is, uh, like, losing their, their color. Uh, the other one just seemed white uh, and a bit blue. Um... So like that, that didn't seem like there were signs of it being uh, so sold as this one is. What does it seem to be doing? Um, you, it seems to be handling something that you can't see because it's on the opposite side of him compared to you. Um, but it's like looking at something that's on the ground. I guess if we said hello and then he gave a, a, a greeting in response, are we able to just like go around? Oh, <laughs> like he, he he nodded and then he went back to what he was doing. Uh, and if you sure. if you try to like go in, there's going to be a few guards sort of like getting in your way, and uh, they're they're not like super confrontational, but it's more like they're informing you. Um, as they, they, they stop you from coming in and they say, uh, Please do not disturb the Ralzir Gamir. He's in the middle of studying. You may watch if you want. <gasps> studying, you say? 
What was this man's name? Ralzir Gamir? Yes, that's the name of the dragon. Wow, okay. Oops. Uh, what Is that I... two words or one? Here you go. Oh. I got okay. the first part right. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty cool name. Ralzir Gamir. <clears throat> Hey, you say he's studying. Hey, I am a bit of a scholar myself, uh, and I speak his tongue. Um, is would he perhaps be open to a discussion with a fellow scholar? Perhaps there is something we could learn. That depends. Are you a translator? Uh, I speak his language, and I can speak yours. So. Well, he's not I studying uh, uh, his own language, but um, see, um, here, and he like, he points at something, and uh, one of the other guards goes towards his little, like, um, how do we call it? Uh, ooh, you know those little boxes where, like, newspapers are in, and people can just mm -hmm. take one? It's like one of those, yeah. and it's full of, like, papers, and uh, one of the guards goes to fetch uh, um, five of them and come back and give, like, one to each of you. Oh, um, papers. I love papers. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, this paper is uh, uh, is an an, uh, an offer. Um, it promises uh, uh, gold coins in the value of hundreds or, or even thousands to anyone who can bring any knowledge of the language of the Ledarian dragons. In, such as in written form, or by finding a, a native willing to teach, and uh, to report, and to report here, um, to th this place is called uh, uh, like specifically this uh, this area where the dragon lives. It's called uh, in in this flyer the wooden nest. Uh, so to report such findings to the wooden nest uh, in Vera for a reward. Uh, also, am I understanding this right? This dragon is not a Ladarian. This is a Plurnan dragon. There we go. Uh, no, 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 no. This this dragon comes from Cambo. No, no, no. But um, we are trying to communicate with the dragons of Ladaria, or at least would like to. Um, but they speak a language that we are unable to understand. Oh, well, we happen to have uh, somewhat of a linguist of uh, Ladarian languages with us. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if he understands Ladarian Draconic, but uh, if anyone could learn it, it would probably be him. Um, so in the case of Talix... Uh, it's a point um, of Talix, yeah. Yeah, in the case of Talix, so, uh, of course, I'll, I'll let you know, uh, Talix has, like, no knowledge of what the dragons of Ladaria actually speak, like, what even the, the language might be called. Um, but, uh, well, I mean, the, the, the offer, uh, stands, you know? Yeah. If you guys were to, like, learn anything about this, so uh, this is the place to bring it. Le Draconic! <laughs> <laughs> Le Draconic! Well, uh... As I said, if uh, anyone is capable of learning these things, uh... It would probably be him. But are you sure that uh, he would not like, you know, a council of some sort? He would love to have a discussion. Ralzir Gamir is um, a very busy dragon, but if you would like to speak with him, uh, you may just uh, fill in this form, and he hands you <laughs> a paper oh. form. <laughs> Forms. I love forms. <laughs> <laughs> and he hands you a pen, and you take your time. And uh, um, well, this one is much shorter than the previous one. Basically, uh, just your basic information on on who you are, who sent you, and what you need to to do. And the guard promises that on that your request will be processed, and uh, um, that you will be informed if you are allowed uh, um, to to speak with Ralzir Gamir. 
Pontifex will list down like all of his academic accolades and like the names of his books that he's authored and all of that. You go like way over the space that you are allowed yeah, to write into. I think he like into. turns the paper over and like yeah. continues writing on and the And you're back. writing really small. But yeah. Just want to uh, make sure that uh, <laughs> he knows who it is he could be talking to. I hand the, the form eventually back to the guard, and the guard hands it to another person who takes it away. Is there like a waiting list or something? Uh, of sorts, yeah. I don't really handle any of that, but um, all you have to do now is just wait. Come back in two months. Okay, well, uh, thank you for your time. I if in the event that this happens, I will be sure to bring you along. <gasps> a lengthy conversation with a dragon, of, especially one of such age, can be an enlightening experience, especially for someone as young as you are. Could be a positive Pip is, influence. Pip is grinning ear to ear. Uh, and you, uh, oh, yeah. Brooke, you could probably learn something from him as well. These dragons tend to be masters of the arcane in one way or another. Uh, what you do is slightly related. Uh, These yeah. elder dragons are fonts of knowledge. It is a shame to uh, pass up any opportunity to learn from them. If I come up with a question, I will... I will accompany you, but otherwise I'll probably not steal your time. Since knowing you, Pontifex, you probably have plenty to ask yourself. You would assume correctly. <laughs> uh, Tekka, while That's all this is going leave. on, uh, um, to your left, which will be the northern part uh, of the era, um, noticing a lot of like people coming back and forth, you kind of notice that there is a lot of gnomes around here. Um, none of them, at least so far, that you've seen, are the ones you met just the day before. And uh, most of them are not armed. Uh, they seem to be working on the construction of a building. Uh, just like imagine it would be further up from where the map actually reaches, but it's in this direction. Uh, it is very, very long building. Um, but there's a few gnomes that are indeed armed with their, um, with their, their unique rifles. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, and they, they uh, occasionally uh, meet your gaze, but they're all just doing their own thing. This town seems busy, active. Be on guard. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I understand that Campbell is known for their uh, philosophy as well as their um, their gemstones, their jewel crafting. Yeah. Perhaps there is something of worth to be found here. Yeah, both in you know form of philosophy and knowledge, it is always good to enrich your mind that way, but also. Uh, I understand our friend Pip here likes shiny stones. And Campbell is renowned for their shiny stones. <gasps> they are? Yes, this might just be your home away from home. There's dragons and life lessons and shiny rocks. It's <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the woodworking is a little shoddy, but yeah. <laughs> you could learn something from Alien Arden. We should Tekka. also... What is it, Pip? Tekka, I will let my rage flow like the wind, and I will spin it into a new storm, and I will go and find rocks and <laughs> and make the most out of it. Good. We should also look for opportunities to get some work, earn some money. 
As far as I'm aware, most of you are almost, if not completely, out. Yeah, I have a few coins to my name, but uh, of course the fund is to the group, as always. All right. Well, why don't while well, you guys explore, I can see if this time maybe has a bulletin board. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find a job somewhere. Hey, that translation work pays well. We just have to find a Ladarian dragon and learn its language. Easy peasy. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're looking for a job board. Uh, maybe we should discuss where we meet before, if I go by myself, unless you all follow. Perhaps at the, either the fountain that we saw in the center of town, or mayhaps at the gate that we entered to? Sure, let's meet at the fountain. This seems apt to me. Uh, Pip, would you mind if I were to accompany you? Oh, uh, that's fine. Right, Will. Uh, lead the way. And Pontifex is going to turn back towards the dragon and then thaumaturgy, explosive voice, Indraconic, shout out. Uh... Hold on, I have a gimmick. <laughs> hey, my name is Pontifex. Don't forget it. <laughs> I hope to hear from you soon. <laughs> and then leaves. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, can you just make me a charisma check? Uh, it's like charisma. flat charisma or yeah, like yeah. a persuasion or no, something? No, just flat charisma. Okay. No. Okay. And uh, the, the dragon turns his head again. Um, Razir Gamir. Uh, the, um, uh, the thundering voice once again calls out to him. And um, you, you hear a voice coming from the direction where the dragon is in, on the opposite side of the fence. Uh, uh, the, the voice being definitely not the dragon, so just um, someone else like shouting something back that you didn't quite get, but it sounded like angry. <laughs> like interrupting someone else's session. And <laughs> 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 you hear a child crying in the distance, some baby that he must have awakened. What uh, will you do, Tekka? Hmm. I will walk with Brooke. Hmm. Right. Uh, so Brooke and Tech are together, and Pip and Pontifex are together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's say that. Tal well, it depends. Uh, Brooke is looking for a job board. What are Pontifex and Pip doing? Rocks. And general Rocks. shopping. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Probably um, picking up some rations and stuff. Well, in that case, you're all, you're all heading in the same direction. Um, <laughs> as br <laughs> you say goodbye, and then you start walking all the same way. Uh, the as, the, as the place where you're most likely to uh, to find a job board would be towards a marketplace. Yeah. It's like, all right, well, we'll go do what we're doing, and you do what you do. We'll meet up later, see you then. And then we all start walking, and it's the same direction. <laughs> that real awkward moment. Yeah. <laughs> Humanoids. <laughs> <laughs> Windsor, would there be any banners in red and purple out for the town? Or somewhere displayed in the town? As you guys begin to poke around in the market, uh, uh, Brooke, you end up spotting uh, uh, two handkerchiefs uh, sort of like knotted together, and one is red and one is purple, uh, being tied together and uh, um, dangling outside uh, of uh, a door um, on the north uh, uh, western side of town. So it's actually like just 
um, you would see it from roughly this, this spot as you're going like almost all the way um, across the market because it would be like over here and it's on the other side of the river. Hmm. Like a, a little bit well. further than this spot. <clears throat> Tekka, I think I might have found something. If you look over there, just for future references, and see a banner or something like those handkerchiefs and that color combination, that's usually when people look for phantoms. I see, then I will not interrupt your official business. Uh, I mean, we can go there together. Worst case, they tell one of us to leave, right? Okay. Um, All right. Well. I didn't catch that. Is it just the two of you going, or are you waiting until later? Uh... Depends on if Talix comes with us. I no. don't know. <laughs> yes. You know what, Talix? You stay behind. You look for your fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he goes that our... Sorry, whenever we first entered this white building, like directly on our right, that we just kind of zoomed past, is that like clearly a church or is it yes. it's not? It's uh, clearly a temple. Um, and you would have seen it. You did, like, run past it in your excitement to see a dragon. Um, but, um, like, passing in front of it, it has very clear... Um, there's multiple statues and multiple reliefs in the in the wall itself that make it clear that this is a church of the lion. I see. Oh. Do we, like, send Talix there? Like, I don't know if it's a customary thing as, like, a an acting cleric to, like, um, pop in and say hi to other clerics of towns you visit. <laughs> <laughs> this is, like, a courtesy call. I don't know. Uh, you know what? Let's say that, yeah, to make things simpler. Um, so when you guys sort of, like, that's split where up... Would go okay. anyways. Yeah, let's, let's put Talix in there for the time being, and then, you know, we'll resolve this with Jason at a later time. Uh, so, Dennis, to answer your question, no, Talix is not coming with. Oh, okay. Well, then it's just you and me, Tekka. To the door, then. Door. Walk, walk, walk. Okay, uh, <laughs> Pontifex and Pip, you're looking around in the market? Yes. Uh, in priority order, we are looking for rocks. Mm -hmm. We are looking <laughs> for food. Mm-hmm. Do you have any addition to that, Matt? Um, Pontifex is probably uh, casting Detect Magic, and I'll use my, my feature even just to, to do it instantly. Um, and he's just kind of... He's more just chaperoning Pip, uh, but anything magical um, might catch his eye. Just more out of curiosity. Okay. Uh, Soltel, if you want to if you want to purchase food, like in terms of rations, that's available at the normal uh, player's handbook price, however many you'd like. Um, rocks, I'll take an investigation check from both of you. Um, <laughs> anything magical really in here? Okay. Okay. Uh, have you been promised that this place is uh, um, known for its rocks? Um, but ultimately, while you do find some gemstones uh, that are for sale, they're not rocks, they're like, uh, like actual uh, gemstones, and they're absolutely pretty. I don't know how much interest Pip has in those. Uh, I... I think they would definitely catch Pip's eye. Okay. And these uh, um, have all been brought from Ledaria. Uh, what? From Plurina. Um, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> uh, most of them being like uh, part of like jewelry, uh, but there's some that are also separate and they're meant for like, well, um, 
right, well, whatever purpose you want. Uh, but like from the from the um, any amount of uh, like investigation that the two of you do, it, the, any of these gemstones are far beyond what you can currently purchase with uh, your money, even the two of you combined. Um, but uh, hey, they're 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 pretty. Uh, Pip might not have seen uh, many uh, stones like this before. Um, this is a long shot because it's a little specific. Uh, do any of these jewelry vendors happen to have a pearl of relatively significant value? Specifically a pearl worth 100 gold. Um... <laughs> It seems like I took this as a spell, so it seems pretty important to actually be able to use the spell. There's actually a few pearls for sale, um, but these ones have not been brought from Plurna. They are they have been found in Ladaria. Okay. Um, do any of them have like a price tag applied to them, or like a way to to gauge their worth to find one that's worth at least a hundred gold? Uh, well, you can give me an investigation check if you want to, like, sort of get a get a sense for their value. But they're both priced. Uh, one is priced at a uh, priced at hundred and twenty gold, and the other three hundred. Uh, which feels about right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so you said there's one that's worth like hundred and twenty gold. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... And again, yeah, Pipkies are very small, white, and very pretty rocks. Uh, yeah, he'll talk to the person. Okay, uh, there's, um, this is uh, a, uh, who is this lady? She is a dwarf, uh, um, who is selling these. Um, and she's letting you, like, look at them, but she's not letting you touch them. Uh, not before sure. you fork out the money. <laughs> Uh, what would you like to this ask This piece here. Uh, I am interested in it, this pearl. Uh, it seems very fairly priced. That is a... Uh, honestly, that is a rare commodity amongst uh, most of the salesmen. Uh, is there... I don't understand how the markets of this place work, but uh, is this a currency-only type of thing, or do you accept uh, bartering and exchanging? Uh, ooh, 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 hold on. Uh, yeah, let me get, let me get this. Nope! <laughs> <laughs> I pressed Control f in Tabletop Simulator instead of my Google Doc. <laughs> that is a um. resounding no. Okay. <laughs> the no, the no hold on, hold on, me. one second. No! <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Okay. Okay. Uh, no. This? <laughs> <laughs> This woman, Anyways. this woman uh -huh. accepts uh, uh, plurin and money, salt, mm -hmm. and uh, weave gold. <laughs> and what? Weave gold. What is that? Um, and both of you can roll a history check, but I feel like Pip should do it with disadvantage. It's just like very unlikely that he wouldn't know. It's gonna be great. God, my rolls have been so low. Ah, it's crazy. I ignore that roll. It's not real. What? Ignore what? it. It's not real. What? It's not a real roll. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Here's the other one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Ah. Uh, like when when she says we've gold, both of you say what? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and she giggles a little. She giggles a little and says, um, uh, "Well, it's that uh, that kind of new currency that the mages have been using lately." Oh. Those um those coins full of uh, magic power. I see. I I am a bit of a mage myself, but I am new to these places. Uh, well. Uh, if you do not accept uh, trades or bartering, uh, do you know, is there someone here that would appreciate a piece such as this? Uh, and he will pull out that uh, that magical sequined dress. 
Uh, I felt it would look uh, very radiant on some of the people here. Yourself included, <laughs> of course. But uh, if I must go and exchange it for something as simple as coin to then come back, uh, I will do so. Um... I still have no idea what this thing does. I just know it's magical. <laughs> it's okay, part of the reason okay, why I want okay, the pearl. Okay, okay. I will trade it for the pearl. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, this woman actually redirects you to... Uh, she redirects you towards a building um, where she tells you um, over there the... They run this business, this kind of a uh, new thing. I've personally never used it, but um, uh, they'll buy... Well, they'll take anything from you and give you money right away. And um, the money is sort of like a deposit. Like, if you eventually come back, uh, you can get the item back if you pay back that amount of money. <laughs> She's telling um, me to go pawn it and come back. <laughs> and they'll, uh, oh, they'll charge you, you a fee if you want to like hold the item for a while and then come back for it. But you can just also just use it to um, to sell it for good. Uh, would you permit me? Uh, I will not leave, of course. I will be right here. Um, do you permit me to uh, use this portal for just a moment? Uh, it will let me decide what this uh, th this dress is filled with magic. You understand, but oh, I'm no, not no, quite no, able no, to no, recognize. No, 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 touching, no touching. Sorry, just. You know, you understand, right? Uh. Hey, what if I don't have to touch it? Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> God, my rolls are shit. <laughs> <laughs> um... This woman kind of strikes you as a kind of person who doesn't really um, understand magic much, and like the thought of it uh, um, seems to put her a little bit like to make her feel a little unsettled. Uh, she might be thinking that perhaps your magic is going to make you know the item disappear. Uh, so she instead she looks around nervously, perhaps you know like trying to make eye contact with a guard as she says, "No, I, I would rather you uh, please not do any magic here." Yes, okay, that is fair. He is actively channeling magic as they are talking because he's <laughs> detecting magic. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I will uh, I will do as you recommended. Uh, Pip, would you wish to accompany me to this pawn shop or uh, should I just leave you to your devices? Mm hmm, mm hmm. Right, well, okay. <laughs> Part of the excuse I start walking. <laughs> Pip will follow. <laughs> uh, the two of you are, like, in the process of uh, moving towards the building you've been right towards. Uh, um, in the opposite direction, so coming from, like, in the direction of the fountain, uh, there's a small group of gnomes that are in currently marching into the, the market. And all of you quickly glance at them. Um, like instantaneously, and you see none of the, you recognize none of the ones you met uh, uh, the previous day. Uh, these ones, they are all armed. Um, and, uh, however, unlike you, most people in the market don't really seem to pay much attention to this group of gnomes. Uh, perhaps they're they're used to their presence in the area. Uh, but as they reach somewhat like the, the center of the market, uh, one of the gnomes suddenly shouts, Pay attention! And holds a rifle and shoots into the air. And uh, that it just creates this incredibly loud thundering sound that makes all the nearby stands uh, and the windows shake. Uh, there's a few people that, that instantly scream and uh, everybody stops what they're doing and turn around. And all of a sudden there's silence in the marketplace and you can see even the head of the dragon all the way um, in the back, all the way behind this enormous wooden fence just popping up from behind it uh, to, look at, to look at what's going on. And uh, satisfied with the attention that he has gathered, um, the gnome holding up the rifle he just fired says, Attention citizens of Vera, last night 
a rifle such as this one was stolen from us. As you are well aware, possession of a firearm by anyone other than a gnome or an officially licensed elf is punishable by death as decreed by Grand Emperor Ratix Billwar. Return the weapon within 24 hours and we shall overlook this infraction. But if the rifle isn't in my hands by then, I'll have no choice but to involve the Arch Commandant and the criminal will be punished in accordance to our laws. There's a bit of a murmuring um, taking place around the marketplace as the gnome um, and the ones that have accompanied him turn around and uh, walk back the way they came from. Uh, Professor? Uh, yes? Who's Grand Emperor... What... What's what's his name? I'm assuming that's the the leader of Stasil. Uh, yes, yeah, so of the entire gnomish country back in Plurna. Uh, that would be the name of the gnomes leader back in Plurna. Uh, they have their own nation called Stasil. Uh, yeah. Well, why do they have? Why are they here in a Campbell place? It seems like the gnomes have somewhat of a free reign uh, over Lodoria. Uh, from what I've learned, the colonists choose to, uh, well, to not get in their way for the most part. Uh, the gnome people are warlike and filled with uh, feelings of vengeance, so they are not easily crossed. Most people find it easier to just let them do as they wish. They seem pretty pushy. Well, they have somewhat of a right to be. They were subjects of a level of cruelty. Uh, Talix is not here to hear of this, but uh, the Jade Council, it is uh, somewhat of the founders of his faith. Uh, there was a war, and the Jade Council massacred the Gnomish people to the point of extinction, uh, but then the war was, well, a ceasefire, a form of peace was called, uh, and the gnomes have slowly but steadily rebuilt themselves from the ground up, but uh, they still harbor lots of feelings of uh, vengeance, mm. especially towards the well, towards the nations that were part of the Jade Alliance, uh, the eastern ones, and if I'm not mistaken, Campbell was one of them. They were part of the acting force that called the gnomes. Still, that's a lot of... I mean, that's a... That's a lot of trouble to go to just for one gun. I mean, causing such a big scene in a place like this. Uh, the firearms are somewhat of... A point of national pride and a bit of a sacred item to the Gnomish people, but it is also one of the few things that allows them to be the well, the force that they are. If other nations were to also have their hands on the technology, uh, the Gnomes would lose their, I suppose, their chip. Huh. Really? These people uh, still to this day still have a passionate dislike of Gnome. Like our friend Brooke. Me wanna... It kind of makes me want to steal one. <laughs> I mean, I would be lying if I said I was not curious about their inner workings. But, uh... It might not be best to willingly involve yourself in such things. Unless, of course, you wish to become licensed to use one. That is an entirely different story, and I would actually applaud you for going through the bureaucracy and the legislation required. There's probably lots and lots of forms and paperwork and... Oh, uh, oh look, the pawn shop. <laughs> <laughs> I might apply for my license just myself, just so that, <laughs> so that I may fill out more forms. <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> Just imagine it. firearm license addressed to Pontifex Pasta Luce Hall and Knock. It would take up the whole sheet. 
<laughs> you have to keep your wrist in shape by filling out as many forms per day as you can. To handle the recoil. <laughs> okay. Artifacts um, measures his success in I wish to become a gun day. wizard. <laughs> forms per day. FPD. Um, tech and broken, meanwhile. I gun. Uh, as you leave the leave uh, the town across this uh, uh, this bridge over the river, uh, and you head towards this this uh, opposite side, uh, where the the buildings are really scarce here, and it's, uh, um, this seems to be like where all the farms uh, uh, begin. And uh, uh, this area is more like th there's chicken coops and there's pigs. Um, Teka, you, Teka <clears throat> you might be. Um, your attention might be drawn actually to the opposite side of the river, the one you just came from, uh, where you can see that there is a, uh, there is a pretty large group of Itara Fili uh, in that area, uh, currently fishing, and there's like guards keeping an eye over them, and there is like a very clear tension uh, between them, uh, but otherwise not interacting. Uh, Brooke, you. There is uh, one of the farms, uh, one of the uh, farm buildings uh, uh, in this area is the one with the... I call them hangar chiefs, but they're like bigger, they're, like halfway between that and the flag. Um, <laughs> sticking, uh, um, hanging from the top of a door. I would go to the door and knock. Uh, okay. Yeah, you knock uh, and actually... Um, Somebody comes not from inside, but from like around, uh, from one of the the chicken coops uh, uh, in the area. This is a this is a pretty large, pretty muscular man, uh, a human, um, who like when he comes over, he stops to see the two of you, um, and passes a hand through his blonde hair um, in a bit of like. Um, Sort of like uh, there, there is a bit of a, definitely a bit of anxiety seeing the two of you, um, but then he relaxes a little bit when he's uh, he takes a better look at you, Brooke, and says, "You, you one of those phantoms?" I am. Uh, go yes. Good. Good. Uh, come in. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, and he, he opens the door. All right. I'll gesture. Take her to follow. Take a nods and follows. Okay. Um, inside the building is like um, spacious enough uh, um, and qu just quite normal. Uh, everything seems to be kind of uh, uh, new, like the buildings being, uh, uh, th this building being brand new and the furniture having been just put together. Um, the uh, nobody's currently in the house uh, except for when the three of you step in uh, and again this man is sort of like glancing a little um a certainly a tech but uh, still gesturing for him to come in and welcoming uh you guys in um he he pulls a few chairs from like under the table and invites you to sit in okay can i bring you something do you uh do you drink tea yeah, if you have some, I'd love to take some. And he waits for Tekka's reply. I'll take what he's having. Um, and as the man begins to uh, put some, some water to boil, uh, he also sits down at the table and he says, uh, So um, you're, uh, you're going to, uh, to take her job? Have you, have you heard anything about it already? I have not. I was I just saw the colors and wanted to check in on seeing uh, what is going on. Uh, that, this should be a pretty simple one for for somebody like you. I hope. Um, the name is Kraith, uh, uh, by the way. And yep, yeah, uh, thank you again for for this. Um, I mean. Yeah. Go ahead, explain. I haven't accepted yet. I want right. to see what it's about. Right, right. Um, it, it should be really simple, really. It's just that uh, the uh, all of us are our chickens, our pigs. Uh, um, they have been uh, slowly uh, over time, one by one. They have been uh, uh, eaten 
by a wild uh, uh, by wild wolves, and uh, we just need them gone. That that that's all. Do you have any idea how many wolves those are? How they look? Where they come from? Um, what time they come? Right, right, right. Um, the, uh, the the animals have always gone missing uh, during the night. Uh, um, not that often, but perhaps one or two per, per week. Um, some of us, uh, this, this has been happening to, to all of our animals and we've... Uh, um, all the people in the area have been affected. We've all put together the money to uh, to hire a phantom to get rid of them. Um, we don't have that much, but but some of us we, we've seen those wolves, and uh, they have they have these they're like rubies that that come out from their fur, and even their teeth are made of gemstone. And uh, per, even if if our money is not enough, if you were to to kill one of them, you could surely keep those and uh, that would cover the job right uh, no, all we got all we managed to to, uh, to scrape together is a hundred gold <laughs> uh, I mean sure that sounds definitely like a doable job I am here with a little group though so I will need to uh, talk with them again. How about I'll let you know later today? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. I'll uh, in the meanwhile I'll go again. It is this money we've all put together, uh, all of us. So I'll just go collect it and I'll have it ready if you um come back and, and decide to take the job. Mm hmm. Well, if you can gather as much information about those wolves from from what direction, how many, etc. That would be helpful. Yeah, um, um, I, I know everything that we've been able to, to put together already. Uh, I guess there's a couple more things. They definitely, um, all the howling that we've, we've been hearing, it's always come from the west, from uh, the Saffron Forest. Um, and as for the, for the number of wolves, there definitely used to be more than one, but uh, we think perhaps one of the gnomes might have shot one down, or uh, maybe it wasn't the gnomes. We've definitely heard from uh, uh, other colonies that they've uh, um, that there's been something uh, sightings of the of these wolves, and perhaps they took care of, of some. Uh, there is at least one left. Our animals are still disappearing, uh, but. Uh, I wouldn't know if there's more than one. Hmm. All right. These wolves. Do they bring your animals with them? Or do they eat them at the spot? We've never found the bodies left behind. Uh, they seem to be taking them. Hmm. There's, uh, you know, sometimes we found uh, scattered feathers, some some blood, but uh, none of the uh, none of the remains. I mean, unless they devour them whole and leave uh, nothing left behind, which um uh, is possible. If they are here at night, why are you so certain? These are wolves. Uh, some of us, I haven't seen any of them, but uh, some of the others have. They said they're they're white, uh, uh, with these rubies sticking out of them, and, and, and teeth red like blood, and, and even the claws uh, seem to be made of these gemstones. Terrifying sight. Brooke, these seem like no wolves. Yeah, does it sound like a creature I've heard of before? Uh, Brooke, you can roll a nature check. And, um... For you, this one is going to be a normal roll. Alright. Mm. 
Hmm. Okay. Uh, Brooke. You have not heard of these creatures before. You've heard of people reporting howling um, in this area, indeed, but um, you never knew of somebody who had, like, spotted them or described them the way you're hearing right now. Um, so if this is correct, um, which you have, you have yet to verify, but a description like this is new to you, which would indicate either a, a Either um, inaccuracy or an exceptionally rare creature. You're not wrong, Tekka. I have never heard of a creature like that or a wolf. Can you potentially, if I accept this job, gather the people that have seen these creatures? Uh, yeah, I, I sure can. I'm. Most of them should be still in Vera. Okay. Uh, when did you say you All were right. going to come back? Uh, this evening? Right. Um, I'll have them nearby by sunset then. All right. And uh, thank you for, for considering it. Um, I, I don't know what we're going to do if all of our stock disappears like that. Yeah, that... Makes sense. That seems to be a problem, especially if you're relying on them. We are. I mean, it's our entire livelihood. <clears throat> Alright, thanks for all the information. Thanks for the tea. And if you're ready, Tekka? Hold on. Oh. You should know this. What is the situation across the river? Why are guards watching like hawks? Across the... Oh, um... Those, those, um, Itara people? Why? Um... And he, like, rubs the side of his head for a moment. There's been some kind of incident, uh, um... Our... Oh, I don't, I don't know the details, but the, the Ezen, the doctor in our town, um... She died a couple of days ago, and uh, the Etaran took her body, and... Uh, gosh, I, I don't really know the details, but... I'm sure you can ask around. Hmm. Fine. Brooke, we should look into this. I agree. Anything else, Tekka? Mm, no. This brew... The flavor is new to me. But I appreciate it. What is it? Oh, um, it's white lily tea. Hmm. Common to the area? Uh, actually, the, um... I buy the dried leaves from the market. They're they're brought from uh, they're brought from Plurna. I see. Well, there is much to do, Brooke. We should get going. Brooke nods, then stands up, bows his head a little bit, and then starts leaving. Once he's outside, he turns to Tekka. Do you do this more often? Interrogating people? <laughs> no. But if I am searching for answers, I ask them. You seem to have a talent for that. That was some good information we got out of there. And a good catch said might not be a normal wolf. I worry death of the acid. That should not be. Well, we'll probably have some time here. 
So we should go back to the others and discuss what we want to do. Agreed. And this is a perfect time to call the session. Whew. Oh, boy. Wow. I'm done with the recap. Yeah. <laughs> That's so much information. <laughs> How do I compact this into a into a little juicy bite? <laughs> Had some lord dumps, some traveling, had some racism, we had some trauma dumps, we had a dragon twice. Yeah. Grand Emperor of the Gnomes with yeah. the stolen gun. Phantom job with gym dogs. Uh, <laughs> dead as poisonous Ladorian wolves. Atar and people being viewed by guards. Uh, oh, so and we saw we saw a, a new native animal of Ladaria. Yeah, the Ugrin. And yeah. also, we have a third bird person. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> gotta catch them all. <laughs> we have Boofin, <laughs> and then Glimmer, and then we got the one with the really difficult to say name. I couldn't even write it down. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, I can write it down for you, Grikirk. Yeah, Grikirk, yeah, that one. <laughs> oh, I was not close at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> really? You didn't just make that up on the spot? <laughs> that was in your notes? <laughs> what, yeah? Everybody has a name in here. Oh, everybody. everybody. I torment my DMs Who was the by jewelry asking lady people's names, to. and the I feel like I'm the one being tormented. Is Halgortrude. Greek Kirk. Uh, oh, what? Halgortrude. For Did who you make was that, that the name? Hmm? Did For you who? just make it up? No, I have it in my notes. <laughs> For who was Halgortrude's the name? The, the, the jewelry dwarf lady woman, we yeah, who sold, wow. who was selling pearls. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna call the stream here and uh, let you guys go. So um, thank you for joining me today. Fantastic. I hope we can get Jason in on the next one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hope so too. Cause I'd be sad. Otherwise, uh, we might just have to wait a little bit longer before um we have yeah. the next session. That's it's important um, for him to be here. Yeah, totally. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll start the next session with uh, seeing what Talix has been up to and uh, Ponti uh, Pontifex and Pip uh, at the pawn shop. Uh, um, and then the group is going to, to get together and you can talk about what you found out and then we'll go from there. Actually, right. I have one question. Would we have yes. heard the shot after we left the house? Ooh, yes, you would have heard it. Even Good. inside the house you would have heard it. But yeah, it'll say it happened like, right, right as you left. Then we would probably hurry. Oh, yeah, like, oh, oh shit. Pontifex uh, and Pip on their own in a town with gnomes, and now there's no, gunfire. Um, oh no. Because of the timing, uh. Oh, no, no. Let's, uh, let's, let's say like that. About the time when you left, you heard a gunshot. <laughs> All right. All right. Great All right, session. I'll see, I'll see you next time. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.